A. Continue. I mean, dinner's probably, like, right around the corner, but also. Um. Oh, yeah! We're in the, uh, security room. Ooh, cool. Hmm. Speakers. Yeah. Oh, yeah! Uh, chat's not actually supposed to be there. Chat's supposed to be... Where is chat supposed to be? Chat's supposed to be... Like, here. Shh. Maybe I put chat up here. There you go. Chat's up here. It's a good spot for chat. Yeah, they look pretty normal. Yeah, it's been a little while. And here's the save. Probably opens the same way, too. Uh, actually, I have an idea. If I did this, and then move myself slightly smaller. Hey, there we go. Hey, hey. Now we're both. Now neither of us are blocking the chat box. Perfect. Or the text box. Hell yeah. This works, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, give it a try. Uh, except I don't know the password. Oh, actually, I am reminded. It's been so long, I haven't even. <laughs> I forgot to change that. <laughs> Disembodied but functional. Exactly. This must be the main monitoring station. Probably not powered up. <laughs> A yellow chair. How do you make sure poor families can eat dinner together? Uh, I don't know, food drives? This is wrong. The correct answer is chair table donations. <laughs> No, bad. <laughs> hey, I just rubbed it a little and it turned on. I don't think the rest is gonna be that easy though. Login screen. Oh, yeah, my, uh... Oh, wait, sorry, I meant to hit back. Ah, what's the password? Yeah, yeah. We got this, we got this. Let's make screen blank, though. Don't think the power's on. You're right. Quirty. Quirt. Quirt. <laughs> Darn. <laughs> A green chair, huh? Huh? Oh, nothing. Forget about it. A chair. Yes, and a green one at that. Ah. <sighs> Stop sitting around. His name is Quark. <laughs> I had to make sure that all of them were filled in. This console has a red chair that goes with it, right? Nothing, just caught my eye. Yep, and it's red. A red chair. Let me chair a- No. It's red, it's a chair.
wonder what this is. A machine of some kind. A tall machine. No idea what it does. Hopefully nothing bad. Oh yeah, in this timeline, Quark is missing. Uh, Alice and Luna are dead. And when the white doors opened, we didn't see Tenmyoji or Clover. Just, you know, reminding anybody. That's something. Looks like we've got nine switches. It's a bolt icon up here. My guess is that they're a bunch of power switches. They're all red. Does that mean they're all off? Did you hear something? Yeah, I did. Kind of a starting up sound. These are from security cameras. I thought so. Hey, what about Tenmyoji, Clover, and Quark? Can you see them anywhere? You can see just as well as I can. There's nobody there. No Dio or K either. Might as well take a good look at it though. Damn, nothing. I mean, I only turned on one. Now let's see. Enjoy your lurk, Theta. The first step, there's a red line along the edge. The second step, it is a magenta line. The third, it's pretty deep though, I guess it's more of a landing than a simple step. There's a scion line along the edge. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Fourth step, yellow line runs along the edge. Fifth step, has green line. The sixth and last step, the line running along its edge, is blue. A sofa. It looks like a sofa you might see in a living room or a frat house yard. Glass table. sub in a grate for one of those. Got it. I think this does something. It's weird, but I'm pretty sure they're just shelves. Our glass looks like the sand inside is red. Something that's engraved on the top looks like a number four. Four second clock. Eleven. I clicked off. Apparently, it's calibrated for four seconds. Ooh. There's a set on this side, too. I wonder if it means something. Is this a lion? What's it got in its mouth? Some kind of button, right? It's like you can push it. You can barely make it out, but I think there's something carved on the surface. The sun? Wait, so is this lion eating the sun? Yeah. Whatever. Right now we need to focus on getting out of here. I'm gonna push the button. Is that okay? Yeah, sure. Whoa, the lights turned off. It's a light switch. No, I didn't want to turn the lights off. Or on. The lights are off again! It's dark now. Hey, check it out. It's all lit up. Yeah, pretty colorful. 
I think it's a hint. Maybe. This is pointless. It's too dark for me to see anything. Ah, yes. Red. T-M-J-Y-U-V-G-J. You did a light puzzle last night. It's yellow and green, right? So... Ah, shower room, yes. <laughs> a green chair sitting all alone in the darkness. Floating in the darkness, a yellow chair simply exists. <laughs> darkness makes the red chair indistinct. T-M-J-Y-U-V-G. Thirteen simple puzzles took you longer, but it wasn't too bad. Work? Yeah, I guess so. Good job. Ah, cakewalk. Sure. Did you see this icon? One in the upper left corner. Yep. Oh, you can only do it in three. where the colors are supposed to go. I just forgot. Okay. Red and the triangles are green. Hello, Day Nightfall. Thank you for the raid. What, you, what were you up to? Puzzle. It happened on the screen. Look up. The one over your head. What the hell's that? It's not even a sentence. Will be me. Hmm. SGDQ, I don't know why. It's fine. Oh, AGDB. A 
ADGB. DGB, not AGDB. Oh my goodness. Flip two numbers last night. Uh. This time it's the opposite, I believe. We want the triangles to be pink. And the hexagons to be green. Oh god. Didn't do that right. There we go. Oh, you figured it out. Not bad. And my reward. Ha, ah, nice try. Looks like Zero's got something for you, though. I was you. That's not much of a sentence. Just says I was you. So... We did that one, we did that one. So it is S... S, G, D, Q, N, Y. All of them then. Oh, well done. Would it really kill you to take that disdain, disdain down like 10%? Yes. Look at the corner of the screen. <laughs> Determine the value in seconds for each hourglass, then fill in the blanks. Right. Well, we know this one's four. Yellow is 11. Oh my goodness, so many raids! Hello, Bella Vida! I'm just getting raided left and right! Clicking off, unfortunately, causes things to happen. Hey. Let's get. Because I didn't have time to do the shout out for Day Nightfall. And then we'll do the shout out for Bella Veda. So many raids. Hello. Oh, I don't know how to pronounce your name, but hello. <laughs> uh, make sure I have the correct number of numbers. <laughs> I have to wait a minute and a half before giving another shout out. Shoot. You will get your shout out, don't worry. <laughs> We're playing Virtue's Last Reward. <laughs> so many raids. <laughs> Actually, what am I doing? I already said that I was gonna do this, but I like forgot. Eh. Ah, yes, my Sumeru Castle. Let's see. The security. I'm pretty sure you can count these, too. Like, that's four. You don't even have to do this test thing, I don't think. Like, you could math it out like this. But... Pretty sure you can just, like, look at it, too, and just count the little things. It's not that hard. What? Okay, never mind. Maybe pink was wrong. Oh. Oh, 
Okay, thank you, Bella. Enjoy your lurk. And thank you again for the raid. Yeah, so this is 11. Okay, yeah, I just did the first one wrong. Ha! Ah, got it! Not bad. There's another icon on the screen now. Yes, there is. Hey, look. The screen's changed. There's a different word. The screen underneath them. That would be my guess. Let's give this a shot, then. I'm discounting on you. What is that supposed to mean? Okay, so we need all but the bottom three. Okay, fine, Sigma. I'll turn the lights back on. to be at the bottom. I did look at the green chair. Yeah, it looks like you got it. Good work. Nothing changed, though. At least not here. The blue password! Woo! I've been waiting for this. Oh, did they all turn off? Oh yeah, they did. Now you're losing your mind over fighting Vice in uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake. Well, good luck to you. I was... Nice work. Screen changed. It's a different password. Green password. You missed me reading it then? Yeah. I mean, if I say it now, it just is the green chair. Okay. Star, sun, moon. Excellent. It opened. And there's our secret. But now we have... Now we have... Moon, sun, star. It opened. So it did. This card looks familiar. Different image, though. Yeah, it's one of the AB room cards. Well, I guess there are two of them, actually. There are, these are the star keys the announcer was talking about. And then we've got the same key as usual. Okay, let's get going. Agreed. Gonna open it, okay? Ready? Yes, of course I am. Get on with it. Right, here we go then. Three, two, one. Door is opened. Wait, I just realized something. What's that? When we were looking at the security footage earlier, 
We were just looking for live feeds. We were trying to figure out where the others are, what they were up to, if they were alive, and so on. But we totally forgot that security systems like this can do more than show you live footage. Are you following me? Yeah. You're talking about stuff that's been recorded, right? Footage of the past. If they store that, we might be able to see it. Yeah. I don't know how much luck we'll have, but it's worth a shot. Definitely. Um, uh, what do we do? Leave that to me. You know how to use this thing? Well, it was designed so that a human could operate it. That means there's a logic to how it's set up. A computer computes, a calculator calculates, and an automobile mobiles. Everything's designed to do something, and once you know what, you can start guessing how. You're no Lotus. <laughs> once you start to figure out how to get it to do things, it's just a question of playing with it until it does the things you want it to. See? Monitoring video data. Looks like this is it. Good work! Knock it off. Makes it sound like you're better than me or something. Probably only types 100 words per minute max. Huh. Wait. Uh, what the heck is this? Everything says no data! Hmm. Uh, let's check the log. Damn it. This isn't good. Looks like all the video data was removed before we got here. Five zero. That would be my guess. All it says here is administrator. Damn. Well, that's a little frustrating. That footage could have told us a lot. Yeah. It might have given us what we need to figure out who the killer is, too. The camera in room two in the crew quarters would have recorded what happened to Alice and Luna. Same for the old woman in the warehouse. And if there was a recording of us being carried into the AB rooms, we could have even figured out who Zero Senior is. Hey, what's this? You wanna open it? Yeah. It says Gollum status. That should be the system logs of those robots. I told you about them in the pantry, remember? Yeah. You mean the room full of robots on the other side of the green door? Yeah. Here we go. Shoot. Everything here has been erased, too. Looks like it. I guess there isn't anything we can... Wait a second. What is it? There's a scroll bar. Try scrolling. I knew it! That golem we met is still functional! What do you mean? I thought you told me Gollum, or whatever his name was, started spitting smoke and keeled over. Yeah. But he said that his... What passes for Gollum's brain, I guess, was in the main computer. Only his body was disabled. His brain is probably still functioning. Can we see his logs? Already on it. Here you are. Then... Hmm. Try the one that says cash. Figus wondering about robots. <laughs> hmm. These file names all just seem like random characters. Numbers, Sigma. Numbers. Whatever. Just pick one and open it, I guess. Sure. This is... Yeah, that's what I thought. This is probably from right after Kate decked us. We'll be tossed into that white door on the left in a minute. Just watch. <laughs> By the ankle. See? Interesting. This is the footage the Gollum pulled from the main server. The original data was deleted, but it looks like the stuff he pulled is still here. Exactly. So, if we go back through these files... Yeah. We might be able to figure out who the killer is. Maybe even who Zero Senior is. 
Nice. Great work, Sigma. <laughs> Come on, I told you. I don't need you kissing my ass. Besides, it's not like I really did anything. We started going through the rest of the files. The security footage showed Kay and Dio clearly passing through the white door on the far right. Good. Looks like they're both fine. That just leaves Tenmyoji, Clover, and Quark. I opened my mouth to continue, and then it happened. My vision suddenly blurred, and shaking my head did nothing to clear it. I staggered, my balance gone. What? Why is she talking like that? She sounds like someone's playing a tape of her voice all sped up. What is going on here? I can't understand what she's saying. Why is she moving so fast? It's like watching a video on fast forward. What the hell is... Wait. Could it be me? Maybe my brain is slowing down somehow. So it just looks like everything's speeding up. I still couldn't make out what she was saying, so I just nodded weakly. My eyes drifted shut as I tried to sort out what was happening to me. He was having a time. Maybe not a good one, but it was a time. Woke up several minutes later. Hey, I bet that time has passed. So let me belated shout out to Bella Vita. <laughs> hey, there we go. Woke up several minutes later. I opened my eyes. The first thing I saw was the ceiling of the security office. I sat up slowly, rubbing tenderly at my head. Thai, who had been sitting in front of one of the monitors, stood up and walked over as soon as she heard me move. You okay? Her voice sounded... normal again. And she wasn't moving strangely, either. Whatever had been happening seemed to have stopped. Let out a quiet sigh of relief. <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. Don't worry about it. You sure? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. You really looked like you'd lost it for a minute there. Well, I seem to have found it again. This is the security office. Maybe they've got a lost and found? Your sanity's pretty easy to miss. I'm surprised anyone found it, let alone turned it in. Huh. Well, looks like I don't have anything to worry about. Yeah. I think I must just be getting tired. Kinda surprised it didn't catch up to me sooner. I hope that's all it is. You haven't... caught a disease or something, have you? For just a moment, I thought of Radical Six. But I didn't want to worry Fi if I didn't have to. Better to stay quiet about it. Well, you're looking a lot better, so I can stop worrying, right? What are you, my mom? Fine. No more check-ins. Anyway, I figured something out while you were resting. Come have a look at this. What is it? Footage from room two in the crew quarters. The room where we found Alice and Luna. I dug it out of Gollum's cache. When was this recorded? We'll see in a minute. Up there on the right. That looks like some sort of time code. Can you figure it out? No. It's just a bunch of numbers. I can't make heads or tails of it. Yeah. The central server seems to be using its own time system. Files appear to be named based on that system. They might as well be random to you and me, which made it pretty hard to find this gem. Huh? Oh, it's Kay! Yeah. He looks at his bracelet here, probably checking how much time is left. I'll just pause that and magnify it. Zoom! Enhance! 21 minutes. So that means this footage is from 20 min 21 minutes before the primary doors opened, right? 
Exactly. And that would have been the white doors in this case, right? Yes. After Kay leaves this room, it's about two minutes before he comes back with you and me. There were 20 minutes on the clock when we met up with him, right? So that means what we're seeing here is Kay one minute before he saw him. Right. That means this is right after he tried to resuscitate Luna. Yeah, if you believe him. The footage here doesn't show any of that. Are there any other angles? I looked around, but I couldn't find one. The only stuff left is shot from this position. Even so, I think we've gotten our hands on something important. You mean that this is a, a record of what happened right around the time of Luna's death, right? Exactly. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Let's keep going. I'll move back to the start of this file so we can see it in chronological order. Let's say this is zero hours, zero minutes. After all, it's not like we know what time it actually is. Right. So, this is the start of our footage. There's no one here. Yeah. About a minute goes by before anyone shows up. Wait. How do you know it's been a minute? This. Oh, that's the hourglass we used earlier. Yeah. If I play it back at normal speed, I can measure time using this hourglass. Then I just add the time from the hourglass, and that's how far in we are. Huh. Oh, someone's coming in. Luna! Is that Clover behind her? Yeah. This is zero hours one minute. Right now you and I are talking to Dio in the Floor B warehouse. With the time frame we've established, calculating what we're doing is pretty easy. What's going on? Are they fighting? Hmm, no, it's not really a fight. It looks like Clover's just going off on Luna. Luna's just saying silent and listening to her. Yeah. Can we hear them? Is there an audio track? Want to listen to it? What the hell is this? Don't know. The audio data must have been transcoded into something else. Well, we won't be able to understand anything in that. Seen enough? I'm going to fast forward a little bit. Huh? Clover's interrogation goes on for a while, but it's all pretty much the same thing. Now, at zero hours, ten minutes, things suddenly change. Here. Hey! They're gone! As I watched, Clover moved steadily closer to Luna, who backed away almost as if she were frightened. Clover continued her advance until she disappeared below the bottom edge of the screen. Is there another... Uh, no, you said this was it. Yeah, this is the only one that I found. Shouldn't be too hard to guess what happened after you've seen the next part, though. Clover left. She looked like she was kind of panicking. Yeah. This is about a minute and 40 seconds after they both left the frame. So zero hours, 11 minutes, 40 seconds. Only Clover left. Luna's still in the room. That means... Hold on. Wait until you've seen the whole thing before you start deducing. At zero hours, 12 minutes, another person comes in just missing her. Dio. He's disappeared too. Down below the bottom of the sp of the frame. What's he up to? I don't know, but I'm pretty sure that whatever it was, he doesn't want us to know about it. Why? Remember what he said when you asked him about Quark? How the fuck would I know? I've been here. You're saying he was lying. What do you think, Sigma? <laughs> He wasn't in the Floor B warehouse the whole time. He went to the crew quarters after we left him. Yeah. So what would have been important enough for him to lie about it? We should consider that it might have been something bad. And whatever it was, it happened during this time? Yeah, I think so. Alright, now he's left. And it looks like he left in a hurry. Maybe he heard a noise. 
Like what? The cyan door opening. Now, ten seconds after Dio leaves, a fourth person shows up. That brings us to zero hours, thirteen minutes, ten seconds. It's K. Ah. When he heard K open the cyan door, he panicked. Whatever he was up to, he didn't want to catch- he wouldn't want K to catch him at it. And then K disappears too. Yeah, below the bottom of the frame, just like the others. If K was telling the truth, this is where he begins to try and resuscitate Luna. Anyway, nothing happens for the next 16 minutes. It's just... this. So I'll fast forward, alright? Sure. Alright, should be around here. One sec, okay. You should see something you recognize in a minute here. There's K coming in from the bottom of the frame. And he's checking the time on his bracelet. Hmm. So we've come full circle, huh? Yeah. We're back to 21 minutes before the primary doors open. For our arbitrary time code, that's 0 hours and 29 minutes. One minute later, at 0 hours 30 minutes, K heads to the Floor A warehouse. Once he gets there, he'll tell us about Luna's death. That's all the footage I wanted to show you. I've looked at it carefully, and I think it has something to tell us. You mean, who killed Luna, right? Well, I can't say for sure. This footage makes for pretty shaky evidence. But it does suggest a very likely culprit. Who do you think it is? I ran over the footage in my head. Zero hours, one minute. Clover and Luna enter the room. For nine minutes, Clover aggressively questions Luna. Ten minutes, they both move out of frame. At eleven minutes, forty seconds, Clover exits the room. Twelve minutes, Dio enters the room. Dio also immediately exits the frame. It seems likely that Dio was up to no good during this period. Zero is thirteen minutes, Dio exits the room. Zero hours, 13 minutes, 10 seconds, K enters the room. K also disappears from the camera's field of view. At this point, there are 16 minutes where nothing happens. 29 minutes, K enters the frame. He looks at his bracelet. It says 21, the remaining time until the primary door is open. <laughs> no! <laughs> There seems to be only one conclusion. The person who killed Luna is... Clover. What makes you think so? Luna could still have been alive after Clover left the room. Dio and Kay both went into the room after Clover. Either of them could have killed Luna too. That footage alone isn't enough to tell us who the killer is. But if we take one other thing into account, then the case against Clover gets a lot stronger. And what is that element? Dio's behavior at the White Doors. Hmm. Kay wanted us to enter the White Doors. I told him I wouldn't leave three people to die. Do you remember what Dio said? Use your fucking head for once. You're gonna get us killed. He obviously knew that only you and I would be going through the door. Do you get it? Yeah. He knew we had Luna's bracelet. Which means he also knew Luna was dead. Is that what you're getting at? Exactly. If he didn't know she was dead, he would never have said that. The moment Kay suggested we go through the doors, he would have brought it up. That's impossible. How are they supposed to get through without Luna? But he didn't even mention her. Like he didn't expect her to be there. Why would he do that? I can only think of two reasons. One, that when Dio entered that room, Luna was already dead. Or two, he killed Luna himself. The second one doesn't seem likely, though. If Dio had killed Luna, he probably would have made a point to hide that. I'm guessing he probably would have asked where she was. Where's Luna? Sigma and Phi won't be able to get through the white doors without her. He seems like the kind of guy who'd go out of his way to feign ignorance of a crime he committed. In this case, though, he said nothing. 
That doesn't clear him, of course, but it does make it a lot less likely that he was the killer. If he wasn't the killer, then we're left with only one other option. When Dio entered the room, Luna was already dead. Yeah, that's how I see it. Interesting. That's pretty much what I thought, too. And it does seem like Clover had a motive. You mean what Alice noticed? Yes. The movement of the A-B rooms convinced Alice that Luna had killed the old woman. Once Clover realized that, she probably started to think that Luna had killed Alice to keep her from telling anyone else the truth. She probably led Luna to the crew quarters to confront her. Maybe she hoped seeing Alice's corpse would cause Luna to confess. Maybe she knew something we don't. But Clover didn't get what she wanted. Luna didn't confess. Then. During her interrogation, something happened. It's hard to say what. Luna might have said something that set Clover off, or maybe she admitted to a crime she didn't commit just to get Clover to stop. Whatever it was, something happened that drove Clover to murder. When did Clover get the injection gun? I would guess after she went through the yellow door. She would have been exploring the infirmary with Alice and Kay. That seems the most likely place to find it. Anyway, this is all just a theory, right? We don't have any proof, so keep it quiet, okay? Yeah, I know. Oh, there was one last thing. Was there any other footage that showed anything? No. Nothing to tell us where Clover, Tenmyoji, and Quark went. And nothing about the old woman or Alice's murders, either. So Zero Senior's identity... Still unknown. Okay. Well, let's go find Clover. I guess we're not going to know the truth unless we get it straight from the horse's mouth. I wonder if Clover's even alive. She is. She has to be. I sure hope so. What notary experiment is this game supposed to be? We don't know. As far as we're aware, the premise behind the existence of this notary game may not have anything to do with the previous one. Or if it does, we don't really know enough information. Other than Clover, nobody was from the previous game. Like, no one was in the previous Nonary game. Or at least, there shouldn't be anyone who knows about it. No one's here. Yeah. Alright, let's start looking. We'll go through the crew quarters and work our way toward the elevator. Got it? Yeah. You mean clopper. <laughs> My gosh. You search rooms one and two. I'll take three and four. Got it. in the very first one, and then Clover was in 999. Indeed the same Cloverfield. At least as far as we were led to believe. I mean, it's 
painfully obvious. I would say. <laughs> Luna. The most horrible thing about death is how it turns a person into a thing. It's a thing that looks like your friend, but it's not them anymore. Just a strange, cold shell. And every time you look at it, Feel a little of that coldness creeping around the edges of your soul. Seeing death puts a heavy ball of lead in your stomach that just sits there, poisoning you. I turned and left the room. No good. There's no one in three or four. What about yours? Same. Nobody in them. Except... Except Alice and Luna. Lead ball pressed against the inside of my abdomen. I leaned back against the wall and let out a long, weary sigh. What's wrong? Ah! You need to get it together. What are we doing right now? Looking for the others. Right. I know how you feel, but sitting around being miserable isn't going to help anybody. Let's go. Yeah. You're right. I turned and headed for the door at the far end. I heaved myself up off the wall and followed. She's bigger than you. She's closer. She's in my face. Infirmary. First thing I felt was that strange cold sweat of terror. My stomach clenched in protest, pushing a wave of bile and nausea up into my throat. The lead ball turned to ice, and my legs began to tremble under its weight before they finally gave way and collapsed. They were dead. I could feel it the moment I looked at them, but I didn't want to believe it. They couldn't be dead. Perhaps... perhaps they were just sleeping. The cool and feel of their skin under my shaking fingers dashed any hope I'd had left. I'm gonna kick you out of the- <laughs> I wrapped a trembling hand around the end of the bed and hauled myself up onto it. Even when I closed my eyes, I could still see them. My heart hammered away at my ribs, and my chest felt so tight I could barely breathe. Now. I forced myself to take long, deep breaths. Finally, I opened my eyes. They were in a blind spot. What? The security camera. Remember how we didn't see anything in the real-time feed in the security room? Yeah. I guess the partition was in the way. Yeah. They're handcuffed together. Yeah. Whoever did this really didn't want them going anywhere. The chain's been looped around the pipe below the sink. They would have been trapped here when the doors closed. Why? Look. See the red marks on their wrists? They were trying to get the handcuffs off. So you're saying it wasn't one of them that did this? Probably not. There's a cut on Tenmyoji's left hand. Yeah. No. Kick him out of the room. We'll be right back. There are dead people parking at. This is a very serious moment, Val. People are dying and dead. It looks like it's probably from a knife or something similar. Must have been deep. And the blood on his clothes probably came from that wound. I don't see any others, at least. If this was the only one, it doesn't look fatal. I don't think he died from this cut. A penalty. When the primary doors closed, they couldn't get to them. The needles in their bracelets activated and... Yeah. 
You can see the marks on their wrists from where they were injected. The tubicurine must have killed them. <laughs> Do you think that's why they were handcuffed to the sink? Hmm. They wouldn't have been able to get through the white doors without Quark. Someone wanted to use the penalty to kill them. They didn't need to tie them up. Yeah, you've got a point. Hmm. Sorry. I need to hit dismiss on this. So that way it doesn't like ring. What's wrong? I take back what I just said. You find something? Yeah. Fide bent down to pick up something and handed it to me. A cyan bracelet? This was Quark's! Correct. It has 9 BP, too. There's no mistake. What is Quark's bracelet doing here? Wait, no, hold on. If Quark's bracelet is here, then that means... Your heart stops. Your bracelet comes off. Is that Clover dead? That is a very dead Clover, yes. No. No! This can't be happening. Not Quark. Hey, Sigma, calm down. Just because his bracelet's off doesn't mean Quark's dead. But in fact, this could be good news. A ray of hope. Ray of hope? Yeah, if Quark still had his bracelet on. Then he would have ended up like Tenmi OG and Clover. But he's not wearing it. That means he might have managed to avoid getting injected with tubocurine. You mean the bracelet came off before the doors closed? Yeah. That's impossible. Zero Junior told us that you, they only come off when your heart stops or when you escape. Maybe he got out then. Right, he's got 9 BP. Wait, so you're saying he escaped, then came back and left his bracelet here? No, that's impossible too. Zero Junior said the number 9 door only opens once. Even if he was able to get outside, he couldn't come back in. Why do you have to be so pessimistic? Have you actually seen Quark dead, huh? You need to think positive, Sigma. Reality is what we believe it to be. Huh. Really? So you're saying this is what we wanted to happen? That's enough! Quark is definitely alive. He has to be. He has to be. I refuse to believe he isn't. I can't let an innocent kid like that get killed. I wanted to ask if she meant Clover and Tenmyoji weren't innocent and had deserved to die. It swallowed my words. Fighting wasn't going to help us. All I could do was hope that Fi was right. Perhaps Quark was still alive. What are you doing? Examining their bodies. Ten Miyoji first. Why? Clues. What kind of clues? To who might have killed them. Finding Quark's bracelet tells us something. If the killers saw it, that would make for an obvious motive. With Quark's bracelet, Clover and Tenmyoji would have been able to go through the white doors. The killer handcuffed them to the sink to prevent that. Right. That's my guess, at least. That's odd. What's wrong? I can't find anything. I huh? should have found something. What? You remember when we ran into Tenmyoji in the rec room? He sprayed our wrists with luminol. I'm sure I saw him pull the spray bottle out of his pocket. And now you can't find it. Right. Do you think the killer took it? I don't know. I'm gonna take a look at Clover, too. Give me a minute. I knelt down next to Clover as she spoke and began to gingerly examine her corpse. Then after a moment, saw her hands stop. Look, see your thigh? Doesn't it look like there's something written there? Yeah, it does. I'm sorry, I'll have to move your leg a little bit. It's written in... blood. 
It must be Tenmyoji's. It says zero one six. What does that mean? Hang on. I feel like I've seen that somewhere. Zero one six. Zero one six. I know I've seen it somewhere. <sighs> it's no use. I can't remember. Don't get my hopes up like that. Anyway, these numbers have to have something to do with the killer. It was Dog and Rompa, yeah. One ones or one zero three seven or one one zero three seven. Oh. She must have written them after she got hit with a soparil. Yeah, I actually talked. <laughs> Uh, with that say, um, ah. I actually mentioned this in a chat in a different stream that this particular moment, maybe not this moment specifically, but what happens right after made me want to punch a wall. <laughs> there would have been a few minutes before she went all the way under when she could have done something. I think she probably used those last minutes to tell the rest of us who killed her. <laughs> Zero one six, huh? Maybe, but the only people who could have done it are Kay and Dio. Assuming it wasn't one of us, I mean. No. There's also Quark. I mean, I'm not saying he did it, just... The <laughs> you like to think it's a game in this universe that they all played? Damn it, this is hopeless. I can't keep up anymore. Everything here is a goddamn mystery. Like, what about that old woman we found? Who killed her? The movement of the AB room makes Luna seem the most suspicious. But when would she have done it? And we don't have a good explanation for why she would have wrapped the knife up in the handkerchief. And of course, now Luna is dead too. So who could have killed her? The footage from the security camera paired with Dio's behavior makes Clover seem like the most likely suspect. But now we'll never know for sure. Alice's killer is a complete mystery. We don't know what the hell 016 is supposed to mean. We don't have any idea where Quark's gone. What the hell does any of this mean? Who killed everyone? Was it Zero? Zero Senior? And who is Zero Senior? What the hell does he want? Why does this game even exist? And why did they kidnap us and bring us here? Well, we're at it. Where is this? When is this? Mysteries. 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 I feel like my head's about to explode. Please, Fi. Give me something. Anything. A clue. A hint. Come on, you gotta have something. The luminol. Huh? I think there's a very good chance someone took the spray bottle out of Tenmyoji's pocket. Yes, Clover is dead. So is Tenmyoji. And we have- we know that Quark's bracelet is not on his body, which we don't know if that means that he's dead or if he somehow managed to get it off. But considering how you remove the bracelet, the more likely scenario is that he is dead. But we don't know that for sure. At least Fi refuses to believe that that's the case. Okay, but how is that important? Well, let me ask you this. Why do you think they took it? So they could... test for blood? What would they need to do in order to do that? They just need to spray the bottle at whatever they want to test. That's it? No, wait, you're right. Luminol reacts with organic compounds and glows, but the glow is really faint. So? So? So you need to make it dark. You have to turn off the lights in order to see if anything's glowing. And that would mean? That would mean... The 
rec room. Fi and I raced for the door. We weren't sure what we'd find, but we knew where we were going. I had a feeling deep in my gut that whatever we found would be the breakthrough I'd been looking for. Making our way. Slowly but surely. Rec room. Everything in my head ground to a halt. Even after all I'd seen, a room full of corpses had a profound effect. It was such a ridiculous thought that before I could stop myself, I laughed. That laugh made me think, is laughter in this situation a defensive response designed to protect a brain from constant emotional bombardment? They say that right before an animal dies, it feels a moment of comfort. Right before death, brain releases a huge amount of endorphins into the bloodstream. Pain is only a warning signal meant to help the body avoid death. But when death becomes a certainty, pain no longer has any use. In fact, that loss of pain can lead to incredible feats on the edge of death. Let's say that two species of an animal come under attack from some overwhelming force. All of them are severely wounded and near death. Species A feels pain, but species B doesn't. The horrible pain felt by species A prevents them from moving, but because they feel no pain, some of species B will manage to drag their wounded bodies to safety and survive. As a result, species A is eliminated, and only species B manages to survive. This process of natural selection has been repeated for thousands, no, millions of years. All creatures that walk the face of the earth are descended from species B. I'm no exception. That's why I can look at a room full of corpses and laugh. The genes I've been given by a million years of evolution have changed my fear into ecstasy. I guess this means you and I are the only survivors. Don't make me keep saying it. Quark's still out there somewhere. Yeah. You're right. He is still out there. So would that mean he killed them? I mean, you said yourself that there was no way there was a tenth uninvited player out there when Alice was killed. And we've also refuted the possibility of Zero Senior being the tenth person. Yeah, I'm a bit of a head case. He's sort of unraveling. I mean, think about it. You're trapped in a you're trapped in a building with eight other people. And then all of them, in pairs, just start dying. <laughs> there is no tenth person. The only people alive are you, me, and Quark. That means- You're being ridiculous. Look at their bodies. There's an axe buried in Kay's back, and a spear has been thrust all the way through Dio's stomach. Do you really think a child Quark's size could do that? All right, then. Are you saying you killed them? Are you insane? Yes! And just when would I have done that? I've been with you this whole time. She was right. After the end of the second round of the AB game, Fi and I hadn't been out of each other's sight. We'd gone through the white door, explored the security office, solved puzzles, all of it together. No, wait. Had been one time. 
One time when I wasn't watching. A few minutes in the security office when I'd rested on the couch. Would she have snuck out then? The rec room and the security office weren't that far away from one another. If the round trip took about a minute, and she'd killed them in four minutes, then the whole thing would have only taken her five. Five minutes. Five minutes, huh? Just how long had I been out? No, that wasn't really right. I hadn't really been out. I just felt like everything was being fast-forwarded. Probably because my mental processing speed had dropped. But how long had I been like that? It might have only felt like a few seconds to me, but it could have been much longer. And where had something like mental processing speed dropping come from? Uh, hey, what you doing there, Fi? Checking their bodies like before. I decided to start with Dio. Find anything? Yeah, two things actually. Oh. Take a look at this. A knife? Yeah. There's something engraved on the blade, too. Myrmidons. Is that the name of the manufacturer? Dunno. It's not a name I've ever heard of before. But look at the handle. You've seen it before, right? This is the knife that was stabbed into Alice's chest. Right. From the looks of it, I guess the blade is about 15 centimeters long. I'd say it's probably about 3 centimeters tall and 3 millimeters wide. Hmm. I think I've heard those numbers before. Like, wound cavity, 150 millimeters. Wound length, 30 millimeters. Wound width, 3 millimeters? Yeah, that's it. When Luna scanned the old woman's body, those were the numbers it gave us for the wound. Hmm. You have fun while you were outside? He needs water. I don't think the knife manufacturer would engrave their names on a blade. Yeah, that's kind of unlikely, but we don't know. Right, well, wound cavity would be the depth of the wound, wound length would be how long it is from top to bottom, and wound width would be how wide the flat end of the wound is. In other words... Those numbers describe the size and shape of the wound, right? Right. So if they match, then that means this knife was used to kill the old woman. Well, I was just eyeballing those measurements, so we can't be sure. Still, why does Dio have it? He must have... gotten it from Alice. I know that! What I mean is, why'd he take it? Did he want to destroy the evidence? Maybe he was the one who killed Alice. That would match up with what we saw. No, wait. Hold on a second. I'm getting confused here. Alice would have had that knife first, right? She picked it up when she found it wrapped in the handkerchief next to the AB room. Right. So Dio took it from her and stabbed her? If that's what happened, why didn't he just take the knife then? Why leave it there for us to see, then come back and get it later? Well, we can look into that more later. First, I want you to have a look at something else. What? Don't you remember what I said? I found two things. There was the knife and... This. Hey, this is that key. What do you mean, that key? We found it in the Golem Bay. Didn't have any idea what it was for then, though. But Alice said it might be important, so she'd hang on to it just in case. So, Alice should have had this, right? Yeah. And now Dio's got it. Yeah. So when Dio took the knife, he also took Kay's key. Wait, Kay's key? Oh man, you couldn't figure it out from the shape? What do you mean? Get over here. A picture's worth a thousand words. Let me show you. 
She walked over to Kay's head, knelt down on one knee, and pointed to the back of it. You remember this, right? Oh, yeah! So that's it! It unlocks the suit, right? Yeah. Let's give it a shot. Before I had time to prepare myself, I shoved the key into the slot and twisted. But... <sighs> it's no good. Can't get it open. Why not? Maybe the suit is powered, and it needs to be on in order to open. But with this axe in here... You're saying it shorted the suit out or something? I think so. At any rate, the key fits perfectly. I don't have any doubt it's for removing Kay's suit. Do you think Dio knew that when he took it? Hmm. I wonder... So, I guess we'll never know what his face really looks like. Yeah. No way we can get that mask off with our bare hands. I wonder who he was. Well, I still haven't checked him over. Let's have a look. Maybe we'll find something that'll tell us who he is. She'd only been searching a few seconds before she stopped and pulled something out of Kay's robes. Look. What is it? A spray bottle with luminol in it. That's the one Tenmyoji had? Yeah. Then, does that mean Kay was the one who handcuffed them to the sink? We don't know yet. Why not? Kay might have taken the spray from Tenmyoji after he died. It's possible he made it through the white doors before we did, went to the infirmary, and got this. Hmm. Anyway, there's something I want to see. Turn off the lights. Are you gonna check for a luminol reaction? Yeah. If Kay used the spray before he died, we might still be able to see it. There's blood everywhere in here, though. That's okay. If he didn't spray it, there won't be a reaction from any of it. Come on. All right, do it. Done. Thanks. Hmm. Just as I thought. Look, Dio's left wrist. The underside of his bracelet is glowing. Exactly. But why? Because there are traces of blood on it. Whose blood? We've seen five people with serious bleeding. The old woman, Alice, Tenmyoji, and these two here. I'm disinclined to think this is Dio or Kay's blood, though. See? If you look, it's been wiped off. Except for the luminol, the bracelet looks clean. Why would someone wipe blood off a bracelet after being hit with an axe or stabbed with a spear, and then spray it with luminol? It doesn't make sense. Then that leaves the old woman, Alice, and Tenmyoji. Right. Do you remember what Tenmyoji said to us in this room? Can I see the other side of your bracelets? Please, just do it. Do you think Tenmyoji had figured out that one of the bracelets would have blood on it? That would have meant he was looking for either Alice's blood or the old woman's. Hmm. I wonder which it was. No idea. But whatever the case, Tenmyoji seemed to think that whoever had this bracelet was Zero Senior. Just relax, okay? That's all I needed to know. What? Neither one of you is Zero Senior. Are you saying that because there wasn't any reaction from the Luminol? Yep. Whoa, wait. Are you saying that Dio is Zero Senior? I don't know. The only thing I can say for sure is that there's a possibility that Dio killed the other six victims. Then who killed Dio? Kay, perhaps. After he was attacked, he used the last of his strength. Another descendant of Species B. Huh? Nothing. Forget about it. Anyway, if Zero Senior was Dio, then... All of this would be over. This awful game would be over. An Ambidex gate has been opened. 45 minutes remain.
until Ambidex game polling closes. What? What the hell is happening? That's impossible. Quark. Quark? Quark opened a gate? Whatever. We need to get back to the floor A warehouse. Hurry! I know, I'm coming! Also, I'm losing frames. Not rapidly, it's just I've been procedurally losing some over time throughout the entire duration of this stream, and we're at 6,000. no one here. Did they run off? Why would they run away? Hell if I know. <laughs> yes. How the hell did Quark open an AB gate anyway? Without a star key, he wouldn't have been able to get it open. You must have taken one from Dio or K before we got to the rec room. We know they went through a white door. Remember? We saw the footage in the security office. That means they had a star key, just like we did. But you didn't find one when you searched them? Right. Well, maybe Quark's a suspect after all, then. You shouldn't write him off just because he's a kid. Maybe he knows how to use a lance, or an axe. That's impossible. You're being an idiot. It's much more likely he found the key card after they died. Oh. All right, let's go find him. Any ideas where to look? Nothing. Uh, how on earth would I know where he might where he might be? Hmm. Well, there's one place I'd like to check out. Come on. Do you know something I don't? The door that Dio and Kay went through. Ah. Dio and Kay investigated. Right. Aren't you curious? Of course. Besides, Quark might be there. Yeah. All right, let's move. The door says director's office. Probably belongs to the director. I hope it has one of those chairs. Chairs? You know, the folding ones that say director on the back. I've always wanted to sit in one and say stuff like action or cut. Or double decaf chai soy latte now! And that's what you think we'll find in there? Yeah! Aren't you excited? Well, there could be anything in there. So, no, not really. Yeah, what if Zero was in there? Zero Senior was in there waiting that for would us. That makes things easy. We'd settle things right now and then get the hell out. Right. Mm. Okay, I'm gonna open it. You don't need to keep asking me if... He's really excited about that director's chair. Help. <laughs> huh. There's no one here. That computer's been turned on. Yeah, maybe Dio and Kay did that. What the hell is this? A lion. Is biting. A sun? It has a couple input fields for a user ID and a password. We probably can't use it unless we know what those are. Uh, why don't you put something in? Sure, I'll give it a shot. Yeah, just as I thought. Might as well forget about this thing for now. 
You can't get anywhere without a password. See if we can find any other clues. This is the director's office after all. If we turn the place upside down, we're bound to find something. Shall we? I turned and headed off toward a bookshelf, leaving me alone next to the desk. I felt... compelled to stay, and found myself staring at the screen. A lion fighting sun. Lion fighting sun. Lion fighting sun. And so Mori, if the ninth lion ate the sun. Remember death, if the ninth lion ate the sun. Could... Could this be the ninth lion? Then... Maybe... Memento Mori. Remember death. Memento Mori. Remember de- Hey, now! That's not- That's not where Dio was! Remember. We don't have the information. It's no good. I didn't know anything. Still, I couldn't shake the feeling that I'd seen the ID and password somewhere before. To be continued! So, let us refer to the big picture of, uh, what leads to a bad ending so I don't go that way. Whoop! Wait. Oh, yeah. Green door. So we need to not go through the green door. Uh, blue door? Alice, Kay, the blue door! Right. We should hurry. We took off toward the door at a run. I glanced back over my shoulder to see the others heading for their respective doors. Vi, Dio, and Clover were headed toward the green door, while Tenmyoji carried Quark toward the red door, followed by Luna. Two. One. Zero. Chromatic doors closing. closing. Maybe. Wait, three doors? It appears they are all locked. Is this the dead end? What's that thing over there? It looks like the thing next to the number nine door. Also, welcome back, Alice. Glad to see you alive and well. <laughs> Does that lever move? Some of them boot you out if you fail, but it's after one try. Yeah, I was just kind of... <laughs> I thought it would kick me out. <laughs> Only one way to find out.
rec room. Let's go. Well, that was easy enough. <laughs> it only opened the door on the right, though. Then we are likely meant to go there. How do we get the other doors to open? I have no idea. There do not seem to be any other mechanisms which might cause them to unlock. I don't think that's really something we should be worrying about right now. We have a door that's open, we should go through it. You are correct. There is little to be achieved by remaining here. For it is, then. Or, right, I guess. Man, it's so great. The only one who's dead is the old woman. Ha. <laughs> mm. Yay. What is this place? The rec room, apparently. Oh, you didn't see it. There was a plate on the door. It said rec room, as I recall. We're here. Short for recreation, one might assume. How ironic. I doubt recreation is foremost on any of our minds right now. Okay, the pool and darts, I get, but... What's with all the suits of armor? Seems kind of weird. If you think the armor's weird, check that thing out. Is that... a ride? Yeah. I see them in front of grocery stores all the time. You put a coin in and it kind of rocks around. You must have gone on one at least once when you were a kid. I have no memory of doing so, but... it is possible. Does this thing mean we were... there were kids here at some point? There were kids? That we were kids at some point? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> no, I don't think so. I guess it's part of someone's collection. That seems like an exceedingly odd thing to collect. Hey, you'd be surprised. So, this place is a lounge, some sleeping quarters, and now this rec room. It's like we're on some kind of luxury cruise liner. It's like, uh... Dorothy's Red Shoes from The Wizard of Oz. That's an interesting story if you want to look that up. Now that you mention it, it does give the impression that people are supposed to stay here for an extended period of time. We don't really know what happened to the original shoes. They are uh, the ruby slippers. I... It's been a while since I've heard this story, but I think it was that they were stolen? And, like, they never, like, found them. There have been people claiming that they have them, but it's like... They're close, but not quite. Yeah. Yeah, the the IRL ones, not the story. Yeah, the ones for the movie in the Wizards of Oz, in the Wizard of Oz, the ones that were used in the movie. Nobody really knows where they are. At least, not officially. They have a small but well-stocked infirmary. Anyone here would be able to treat at least minor injuries and illnesses. There's another thing that's like that, like, one of the biggest art heists in the United States. This huge museum of artwork. A lot of the pieces that these- that, that was stolen still haven't been found. So... Uh... And those are- and they're like... Really nice. We're no Actually, I'm gonna look this up. It's like the huge art theft. Is it in the U.S.? Yes, the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum heist is the biggest art theft in history. In March, on March 18th, 1990, two thieves posing as Boston police officers broke into the museum and made off with 13 works. Um, and a. I don't- th I think a good portion of them still haven't been found. Yeah, like the Storm on the Sea of Galilee, the concert from Vermeer. Uh, they're still all missing, and the museum is offering $10 million for information. 
to the whereabouts of those paintings. So you think this room is to help people keep from going out of their minds with boredom? Oh, uh, let me see. I need to- I- I have bad memory. <laughs> Yesterday? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think the second half of that line is referring to Akihiko because legendary gumshoe who took down a bear is probably Akihiko in his, uh, what is it, Trinity Soul or whatever? Era. But the bear thing was Arena Akihiko. I guess they're just talking about detectives, police officers, whatever. <laughs> Glad to see that they are still being referenced occasionally. Just you know, in one of the in one of easily the most missable areas of the entire game, the TV in Leblon. <laughs> I mean, it's right there, but how many people actually, like, looked at the television every single day? <laughs> but that's usually where they put it. That's where they put it in the previous games, so makes sense. Yes. Relaxation is important in an isolated environment. Everything anybody needs to live without leaving. I guess they're planning to keep us here for a while, huh? Well, that's not happening. I agree. We're gonna get the fuck out of here. Also, I am perfectly blocking Alice, but if I move myself any higher, it'll just be weird. Or if I move myself more into the center, I'm just blocking too much, I think. So sorry, Alice. You've been locked. <laughs> Let's just find those moon card things and get out of here. There's a door over there. It's already weird, just have like having the, ch cause like when it's like this, yeah, it makes sense. This is fine. You're you guys aren't blocking the text box or the character portrait, and I'm not blocking any of the text that appears in the text box. But every other thing is like, ah. <laughs> No good. Won't open. <laughs> Looks like it's locked up tight. I read that weirdly, I'm words, sorry. The moon cards must be in this room somewhere. Right then. Let's find them. But blocking when Sigma is talking. Well, I blocked his name, but he doesn't have a character portrait. <laughs> I'm gonna take a break. It hasn't really been two hours yet, but it has been in stream. I'm at the four hour mark. Oh, the inner thoughts versus spoken out loud. Yeah, I'm just gonna block that regardless. There's no way to avoid that. I'm just gonna take a little break. We're back and ready to go. That's a pretty fancy fixture. Oh yes. Okay, I have no idea. Are these the rules Darts normally uses? I have no idea. Isn't Darts just a way to flirt with girls? I guess uh, some people use it that way, but Darts is a legitimate and dignified indoor sport for gentlemen. Yeah. Just ask the people from Persona 5, Royal. Thank you, game guy. 
what they think. They didn't use it to flirt. <laughs> they used it to increase their bonds of friendship and have better bonuses when they high-five each other during battle. Very gentlemanly. <laughs> what? Where you compete to see how many girls you can get? What the hell happened to you? We don't have any darts. Billiards! Are those pool balls? They used it to enhance their dull lives. <laughs> Felt is damp. I wonder what it is anyway. When I was examining it earlier, I noticed a few areas where it looked like something had been wiped off. Supposed to be a picture of. They're those balls from that kids' show, right? If you collect seven of them, then you get a wish! But there's more than twice that here! Oh, then it's a set of billiard balls. Then? Oh, there's a safe. Long extension cord. It's like this box is connected to the ride somehow, but why? I don't see anywhere to stick a coin in. If there were some vending machines nearby, then we could check for loose change. That seems a little desperate. Then again, I did it a bunch when I was a kid. There's a key around here somewhere. It's one of those rides like you see in front of a grocery store. Looks like Zero Junior. I get the feeling someone's laughing at us. I don't like it. Pool table, huh? Piece of felt has been torn off? You don't say. Door we came in through. <laughs> there should be a keyhole near the exit. Yeah, I know. Huh. Something round goes in it. It's playing a record. Huh? Why won't it open? There's something in there, but we can't take it out if it won't open. Oh, nostalgic. This is a jukebox. It plays an old form of music media known as record. With the push of a few buttons, you can listen to your favorite songs. You could, you might say, extend the reach of the jukebox's cable. Now get to it. 
Nice. Extension cord is connected and plugged in. Unfortunately, it seems that isn't quite enough. <laughs> Why don't you hit it? A little damage might make it more flexible. What the hell kind of logic is that? If being locked means it's working correctly, then if it's not working correctly, it won't be locked! <laughs> nope. If we break it completely, then we're boned. <laughs> what an astute observation. <laughs> My god! This deer must have phased halfway through the wall and they got stuck! How horrific! That's just a mounted head! It's a decoration. Uh, I did think it had extraordinarily long legs. Something on the screen. Rectangular button turns stage lights on and off. Circular button activates armor. Huh. Suit of armor swung the weapon it was holding at the other suit's shield. This guy's holding something. A trident. Some catching fish, right? Originally, yes. I believe it is a slightly modified version, though. This is known as a trident. Suit of armor. Is this guy holding a shield with glass on it? Something under the glass. Can't get to it as long as it's covered in glass. A labrys! Perhaps I should just call it an axe. Now you understand the naming scheme, although I don't remember what Metis is for representing, but yes, labrys and I guess. which is supposed to mean Aegis, which means shield. In any event, it is a European weapon with a bilaterally symmetrical blade. Oh. Yeah, yeah, combine them. With our powers combined. Lance. Charging spear used from horseback. Ow. Put the spear in his hand in exchange for the pool cue. Why was the suit of armor holding a pool cue? The butt end is a little weird. It's got a hexa hexagonal hole on the tip. Oh, at the... yeah. Huh. If we had an Allen wrench, then perhaps we'd be able to remove it. the shadow of the suit on the left have an axe? Well, if I know, maybe it's a ghost? I don't think so. Perhaps we shouldn't concentrate on where the shadows came from, but rather what the shadows mean. What they mean, huh? What if I made the suit of armor on the left hold the axe like it's doing in the shadow? Can I not do that with the lights off? God damn it. But I'd have to ride backwards. And push. Oh! The shield! The glass is broken. You can get that thing on his shield now, right? Yeah, let's grab it. 
It's an Allen wrench. I know- you know what this is, right? It's like a screwdriver, kind of, that uses special hexagonal holes. I know what an Allen wrench is. Ooh. This is the part of the cue stick that we removed with the Allen wrench. Yeah, I can't get the wrench back out, though. Perhaps the wrench is part of it now. If it is, that makes things easier for us. Oh, look at it. Doesn't it look like a tubular key? Ooh. Excellent. Oh, you can- I guess you have that forever now. Bye. <laughs> oh, right. You know, I was all excited about finally being rich after we found these in here, but they don't look right. I agree. The markings are strange. I have a feeling they only work on this ride. Coins. Oh, were you planning to put a coin in there? Yeah, I figure if I put a coin in here, then maybe it'll start up, right? Hmm. Okay, I'll just drop a coin in and... Okay? Why the hell are you riding it? <laughs> Look at me go! <laughs> I... I can't watch this. There is no god. Hey, Sigma! Alice! He's waving at us now. Alice, what's going on? I'm scared. I'm not watching. This isn't happening. Everything is fine. Huh? What was that? It seems to have taken a picture. Hooray! <laughs> ah, that was delightful. Now, where is that photograph? Oh, there we are! Excellent. I give this to you as a memento of our time together, Sigma. Uh, uh I... I don't really... Just holding it makes me feel... wrong. Now, now, that's hardly necessary. Well, well, that's a handsome fellow there, isn't it? I would have very much liked to give these out to the others, but it seems I can't print anymore. Terribly disappointing. Oh. Wait. There's something written on the back. Z9. D1. I wonder what that means. Oh. Hell yeah. <laughs> okay, now to put a coin in here. And the button's lit up. I guess it's on now. There's the black record sitting in the jukebox. Nothing to see here. Move along. But what if... Z9... There's a gold record sitting in the jukebox. Hey, looks like somebody's gone gold! I don't think it's actually gold. I wonder if you can play this. I don't really think the point of having a gold record is to play it. Yes. They're usually just put up on a wall or something. A gold record! We should display it somewhere! Exclamation point! Ooh. And then D1. There's a gold record sitting in the jukebox. Hmm. Nothing comes out when I push buttons. No. There we go. Looks good. Ooh. 
Huh? Did you hear something? Look, the light on the frame in the middle is green now. <laughs> What's this thing? It's a box with darts in it, isn't it? A case for darts. There are three things in it that look like darts. They don't have tips, though. Just the shaft and fletching. Can worry about that later. Well, the only thing we can mess with... Maybe you need to drop them into the pockets on the pool table. Damn, no good. I don't get it. Mm, now to spray this table with luminol. Revealed five letters painted on the pool table. Feels like there's one letter missing. Yeah, 999 is the best one. I started with ZTD and it's certainly charming, but it's charming in a clunky way. <laughs> oh, looking for at your piece of felt, I see. Yeah, I was thinking about trying to fit it into the spare spot on the pool table. And there. Oh, no. Uh, can't say. You, I mean, we can't really talk too much about the cast members for the third game since, you know. Okay, see. Yeah, okay, C A F D B E. I actually have this written down somewhere, I'm certain. The third game, all nine of them are Clover, yes. now. It is the billiards poster.
right. Solid, okay, solid, solid stripe, solid, solid stripe. I forget that these symbols are here. Okay, four, one, and 13. Two. Okay, another solid six. Then F is stripes nine. Okay. Got it. Clone clone verse seven. Ah, that was easy. Are these chili peppers? Yes, I believe these are the variety known as the hawk's claw. Alice, please, try some. I'm not eating that. I don't care what kind of claw it is. Are you even looking at them? These are obviously dark tips. I don't know, I'm just not seeing it. They look like peppers to me. Do you know what soft darts are? They use plastic tips instead of metal ones. They're a lot safer. A lot safer. Excellent, you've completed the darts. Either throw them at a dark board or we throw them at a picture of a boss we don't like. Well, I haven't found any pictures of undesirable bosses or indeed bosses of any kind. Looks like we can narrow things down a bit. <laughs> Not for holding darts, no, but it's got some markings on it. One's red, one's blue, one's green. It says score 91. Wonder what it means. And then red greater than blue greater than green. Or their arrows. Uh, by the way, this puzzle is math. I have the solution written down. I ain't gonna... Do it. I'm sorry. Yeah, the score for each area must have a specific relationship to the other scores. I mean, yeah, I did the first time, but... I'm not doing it subsequent times. Ooh, sir. Oop, wrong one. Good work. It's like you got it. This is a password. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay, I did. Wait, what? Oh, blue then green, durr. Sun. Getting answer from the more generic field, yes. Oh yeah, here's the darts poster. Just telling you how the math works. Star, sun, sun.
All right, it opened. Now, shall we collect our spoils? First, grabbing the thing from the bottom. A map. It says 4B. The moon key cards. You're a solo, okay? Time to kiss this weird-ass room goodbye. I actually had a rather nice time. Whatever. I'd rather forget any of this ever happened. <laughs> you found it. Time to close the journal for now. <laughs> Interesting. What is this place? A warehouse? Hey, look over there. Keep it nearby. Those doors are light. I mean, I don't, it's near. I'm just moving it out of, like, being right in front of me. Shall we have a look, then? Are these chromatic doors, too? They're all the same, though. Well, this one's locked. This one won't open either. No luck here. It looks like they have the same locking mechanism as the other chromatic doors. So these will be the next doors to open. We should go let the others know. Right. Alice and I turned to go, but Kay stayed put. Is something wrong? No. I just feel as if I've seen this warehouse before. Wait, you've been here before? I don't know. Perhaps I haven't been here. Me somewhere very similar. You mean the Floor A warehouse? Perhaps. An Ambidex gate has been opened. 45 minutes remain until Ambidex game polling closes. What the hell? Someone else must have opened one of the AB gates. Before we got back? I imagine they don't care what happens to the rest of us. That would be the most logical explanation. In any event, we should return quickly. Yeah. Let's get going, guys. specific deck of 13 cards? The solution to card puzzle? Oh! Sup, Fi? Where's Tenmyoji's team? Are they not back yet? Ah. Nope, we were the first. Then wait a little longer before you open the AB gate. It wasn't us. I tried to stop him, but... Come on, it's not like when we open the door really affects the matches, right? It's cool. No, it's not cool. 
Your team returned quite early, Dio. Did your investigation go smoothly? I guess. Which room did you guys go to? The treatment center. Treatment center? How is that different from the infirmary? Uh, there were these pod things. Look, just go see for yourself, all right? I don't feel like explaining it. Huh? You took something from the treatment center, didn't you? Huh? What are you talking about? You did. I saw it too. After we opened the safe, you grabbed something out of it and put it in your pocket. Show us what you took. Uh, get away from me. Culver shoved her hand into Dio's pocket and began to dig around. It should be in this one. Let go. Before Dio could push her away, Culver found what she was looking for. I knew it! An injection gun? The label on the vial says Neostigmine. What's this stuff for? I don't know, but I feel like I've heard that name before somewhere. Give it back. I found it, so it's mine. Hey! With a desperate lunge, Dio managed to grab the gun back from Clover. But before she had a chance to protest... Have any of you seen Quark? Anyone? Please! Quark? Did something happen to him? We found a pantry on the other side of the red door, but after we left, he just disappeared. We've looked everywhere, but we can't find him. Dio Stig... Stig me. <laughs> Don't you think you're being a little optimistic there? What? Come on, that little jerk's probably dead by now. We've already found one corpse, right? What the hell is wrong with you? How could you? Why would you say such a horrible thing? Whoa, simmer down there. Just saying it's a possibility. Well, even if it is, we should all be looking for him. Yes! As we began to file out, I saw Al staring intently into the corner of the warehouse. It seemed strange, but looking for Quark was my priority. I turned and headed toward the magenta door. Quark! Are you in here? Guess not. Damn. Let's try floor B then. Sorry, I don't know why my throat made that noise. And Miyoji's team took the red door. They've probably already searched that area pretty thoroughly then. Maybe I'll try the blue door. It's okay, the mic didn't pick it up good. not here either it did i just wanted to... wow okay i believe you uh... <laughs> oh sigma hi any luck no nothing can't find him anywhere i see what about you never mind if you'd found him you'd have said something already indeed i went to the treatment center as well as the Floor B warehouse, but he was not there. 
Oh well. Let's head back to the floor A warehouse. Good idea. Perhaps the others have had more luck. Well, did you find him? Sorry. We couldn't find him anywhere. I I see. He's so upset. No. Are the three of you the only others to have returned? Yeah, we're it. I'm guessing you guys didn't have any luck either. Yeah, no clues or anything. I don't get it. With this many people looking, it seems like we'd be able to find him pretty fast. Quark is only a child. It's possible he's become trapped in a small, enclosed space. Well, wouldn't we at least be able to hear him calling for help? Yeah, you're right. Quark. Tenyoji's shoulders slumped. He looked old. Much older than he had when we met. I could see tears glistening at the corners of his eyes. For just a moment, I saw in them all of his pain, fear, and despair. I felt like someone had put my heart in a vise. Then Dio appeared, and the mood suddenly changed. Hey! You guys, come here! Dio? What are you standing around for? They're in the crew quarters! What? Just come on! Damn your inability to cap. Darn. <laughs> no, it's alright. There's a roaring in my ears. Breathing? Heartbeat? My footsteps sounded muffled, as if I was hearing them through layers of cotton. I pressed a shaking hand to Alice's neck. Her skin was still warm. The only pulse I felt was my own. Looking down, it was clear why. Something had been driven into her chest so far that only the hilt was visible, and the entire front of her body was covered in blood. No one could survive something like that. I forced myself to swallow the stinging lump in my throat and turned toward Luna. Unlike Alice, at first glance, she seemed unharmed. As I reached for her neck to check for a pulse, however, I saw a red mark near her jawline. Nearby on the floor sat an injection gun. I already knew what I would find. Pressed my fingers to her neck and waited. Nothing. They're... They're dead. My god. What on earth happened here? That bastard killed them! Who? Whoever it was that killed the old lady in the A.B. room. You're saying this mystery person killed Luna and Alice? Maybe only one of them was supposed to be killed. But the murderer had to kill the other to keep them quiet. Or perhaps they killed one another. Luna stabbed Alice in the chest. After which... Alice attacked her with the injection gun. That's pretty far-fetched. Look. Look at Alice's clothes. No sign of a struggle. I don't think they fought. Then were they killed somewhere else and then brought here? No. If that were the case, there would be much less blood. I guess that's true. Whatever the case, we have too few clues to figure it out right now. We'd all separated to look for Quark. Any one of us could have done it. You mean the killer is one of us? Do you think there's someone else in here? Well... Do you think that Zero Senior killed these two, as well as the old woman? Hmm. Oh, give me a break! How can you just sit around here talking? No, no point in making a fuss. Are you fucking kidding me? One of us is a killer! I can't think of a better reason to make a fuss. You do realize you're the most likely suspect, don't you? Excuse me? You wait until the rest of us have gathered in the warehouse. Then you kill Alice and Luna. 
You pretended to be the first to find them and... Are you saying I did this? I'm just saying it's a possibility. You don't need to get so worked up about it. Ten minutes remain until Ambidex game polling closes. All players, please enter your votes. If no vote is recorded before the deadline has passed, any non-voting parties will automatically ally. So if you don't vote, your choice is set to ally? I guess that means Luna's vote will be ally for this round. Yes, it does. Perhaps that outcome is what the killer was after. They killed Alice and Luna for that? Who would Luna's opponent be? Quark and myself. One person is missing and the others bought the farm. I'd say this old fart's the most suspicious one here. You want to say that to my face? Yeah. You killed her so you could get a few more points in the A-B game. Are you an idiot? How do you explain Alice? She's playing against Kay, not me! Uh, not quite. Even without his partner, Alice, Sigma will still be able to cast a vote as he wishes. Then maybe that's why Luna died. Maybe they meant to kill Sigma, but something went wrong and they... True. I suppose that is a possibility. But we are engaging in pure speculation here. There is little to no evidence to support any of this. Well, we should probably head back to the warehouse. We should take their bracelets with us, then. Huh? Do they really matter anymore? Without their bracelets, some of us would be unable to open the secondary chromatic doors. You're pretty calm, pal. Too calm. You did it, didn't you? A sterling deduction. I await your further insight. He wears a mask, therefore he is guilty, perhaps? What did you just say? Are you fucking with me? Knock it off. Is there really any point to arguing about this? Agreed. We aren't getting any younger here. I apologize. We should return to the warehouse. Alice. Come on, Clover. We gotta go. No! I'm not going anywhere. I can't just leave her here. Clover? If you don't vote, Dio might get out. Huh? He's got six BP right now. If you don't vote, you will automatically ally. And I bet my left arm he'll pick Betray. That'd be three points, which will put him at nine. Once he's got that, there's nothing stopping him from opening the number nine door. I'll try and pick ally, of course. But Dio's not an idiot. He'll try and stop me or get in my way somehow. Dio will have nine points? What are you gonna do, Clover? If you stay here, you might be letting Alice's killer get away. Fine. I'll do it. There's no way I'm going to let him get nine points. Good. Let's go. Yes. I am reminded now. At first I was like, am I gonna have to check the photo to see which one's the dead end? And then I was like, Five no. minutes remain. <laughs> I know which one leads to a game over. Closes. She'll use that pointing figure to vote. Yes. I took a deep breath and unlocked the AB room. No matter how hard I looked for answers, all I found were more questions. Who had killed Alice and Luna? Where was Quark? I wasn't in any kind of mood to play along with Zero's ridiculous games, but at this point, I didn't really have a choice. I heaved a silent sigh and started toward the entrance to my AB room. Sigma, what would you say to voting ally? I would reciprocate, of course. You have five BP. If we both ally, then you will gain two points, leaving you with seven in total. Should you also cooperate mutually in the following round, you would gain another two points, bringing you to nine. Conversely, if you were to choose to betray me during this round, you would gain three points, for a total of eight. In other words, you will be unable to reach nine BP until the round following this one. That being the case, choosing ally is the most logical choice. True, but how many points do you have? Me? As I recall, you and Clover chose betray in the first AB game. That means you should have 6 BP right now. If you betray me and get another 3, you could get all the way to 9 this round. Ah, yes, that is true. However, 
Escaping as soon as possible is not my goal. But you picked Betray in the first round, didn't you? That was in the interest of my own safety. As I only had three points at the time, the prospect of losing two of them was very unsettling. Now that I have six BP, I have some room for error. Why wouldn't you want to get out of here as soon as you possibly could? Of course I would like to. But attempting to do so would be unwise. Why is that? Isn't it obvious? If I escape on my own, everyone else will be trapped here forever. Huh? What are you talking about? Have you forgotten what Zero told us? The number nine door only opens once! Once that opens, it's all over! It'll close for good after nine seconds, so if you're not careful, you can get stuck. I trust you remember now? So if someone opens it and escapes... Precisely. Did you not realize? Hmm. Perhaps I shouldn't have said anything. Hey, don't tell me you're planning to just leave us all in the lurch and take off by yourself. I would never do that. <laughs> Liar. Consider the following. If I did manage to get to nine points before anyone else, do you think the rest of our companions would allow me to leave? Coming from the guy who is taller than every other character in the game and is cladded, clad in a full body suit of armor. Especially knowing that if they did, they would remain here for the rest of their lives? Well, no, of course we'd stop you. You see? Working toward leaving as a group is the most logical choice for me. One minute remains until Ambidex game polling closes. Our time is nearly up. I trust you will choose wisely. Yes, I will. Yeah, of course. You too. Seconds remain until Ambidex game polling closes. Okay, it made a compelling argument, but I still had to make my choice. Would he really choose to ally? If I chose ally and he chose betray, he'd have nine points and I'd have two. Still, even if he did have nine points, he might not try and escape right away. The question was, how much could I trust him? How about as far as you can throw him? <laughs> How much trust could I give a man whose face I'd never seen? Ten seconds remain until Ambidex game polling closes. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. We ain't getting a game over unless it's a cool one. Which means nobody gets to go, Round ah, two we can't trust your Sigma, ties you up, completed. or ah, I have nine points, you're an idiot, leaves. <laughs> Those are most of the game overs. <laughs> There's only two specifically that are not that that I am thinking of. And one of them we will probably see, if I can remember which one it is, just because it's, like, whoa. And the other one we won't see, but I'll explain. I, well, actually, it's pretty self-explanatory what happens if you go to the direction of that game over. But uh, you'll know when we get there. Results will be displayed in the warehouse. Thank you for your participation. Ambidex gates, now opening. Results from round two of the Ambidex game will now be displayed. Please direct your attention to the results screen. Makes sense. Aw, poor Luna. <laughs> yep. So, you picked Betray. Leading to a draw, it would seem. 
You don't feel bad about it or anything? I could ask the same of you. Okay, yeah, I guess that's fair. I had thought that you would choose Ally. If I had, then you'd have 9 BP right now, wouldn't you? Nice try, but I'm not gonna let you get out of here that easily. As I told you before, even if I were to reach 9 BP, I would not necessarily, necessarily. leave me. <laughs> Uh, guess what? You choose Ally and he does. He does immediately dip. This is fact. The game is a game over. It, it ends right there. He says something about, oh, I'll, I'll find some help and I'll bust you out, but, uh... Sigma gets called an idiot. <laughs> so... <laughs> but why? You know, we could do the th we could do the third game over just because it's like a what the fuck moment. Yeah, but there are only really three bad endings like that are different than. We don't trust you, and sayonara, bitches. K getting nine points and running out is your favorite bad ending. Aw. Well, I did say that I would. I did say I would streamline it by avoiding as many as possible, which unfortunately includes the the sayonara suckers. I've got nine BP. Let's. I'm getting the fuck out of here. <laughs> I might choose to wait until everyone else had also reached 9 BP. Yeah, well, I considered that. Didn't seem likely. And you do not trust me. No well, need to apologize. Trust must be earned in a game like this. Says the guy who told me to trust him so he could betray me. <laughs> Indeed. Clearly, I don't deserve to be trusted. I feel bad a little bit. Poor K. The honesty is refreshing, but that's really not the brightest move. So you chose Betray too, huh? You just picked Ally out of 9 BP right now. Why on earth would I have done that? There's no way Clover would have chosen Ally when you had a chance to betray her and get to 9 BP. Are you an idiot or something? Bunch of smart asses. So you chose Betray? Of course. Luna... Luna's bracelet is already off. No risk of a penalty for her now. That brings Quark's BP up to nine. Are you worried that he might try and get out? Well, if he were to do so, the rest of us would be trapped here. Hm. Bet you're all pretty happy he isn't here right now, aren't you? Whoa, whoa, nobody... Uh, excuse me. Whoa, whoa, nobody's saying that. Yeah, maybe you aren't saying it, but I know what you're thinking. The Ambidex Gates have closed. Round three of the Ambidex game will be the star round. Star keys are required to open the gates. There is no set limit on usage of the star keys. It's <laughs> The Ambidex Gates can be opened as many times as the players wish to open them. As many times as we want, huh? Then that means we can play the AB game over and over using these star keys, right? So it would seem. All right. Well, where do we find them? Beyond the next set of chromatic doors. Oh? You found them already? Yeah, that's right. I forgot to tell you guys. Take a look at the map. There are three white doors in the Floor B warehouse. White doors, huh? Maybe that's where Quark went. The warehouse on Floor B, you said? Yeah, but you're not gonna be able to get through them until they open. Hey, we're solo this time. We've still got more than 80 minutes until that happens. Damn. We will need to form groups of colors that can make white. 
Time we had a look at all our colors then. Yeah, looks like they've been shuffled around again. Looks like I'm a blue solo. I'm a magenta pair. As am I. You and me, huh? Better than Dio, I guess. You say something. What color are you? I'm a green solo. Oh. What's with the sign? Forget about it. What about you two? Cyan pair. I'm a cyan pair too. Alice and Luna's bracelets have changed as well. Both of them are yellow pairs. Then what color is Quark? He's a red solo. In order to open the white doors, you'd normally Ah, need that's say, why she sighed like blue, that. <laughs> he said green solo and she's like, fuck. <laughs> But solos can't group together, right? That's why the pairs are magenta, yellow, and cyan. Magenta is a mix of red and blue. Yellow is a mix of red and green. Cyan is a mix of blue and green. So if you combine magenta with green, you get white. And so on. I see. Okay, then. We just need to get to the Floor B warehouse when the doors open, right? I'll be taking off then. Where do you think you're going? Anywhere that isn't here. Hanging out with a murderer? Doesn't sound like a good time to me. The guy who insists on splitting up is usually the first to bite it. What? Well, then again, loners often turn out to be killers. Just what are you getting at, old man? You think I kill him? I don't know, Dio. In another timeline, not quite the same as this one, but similar to a point. You had blood on your bracelet. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe not. But you're pretty damn suspicious. You're trying to start something, you wrinkled old piece of- Hey, knock it off. We don't actually know one of us is the killer, do we? We have no evidence of that, no. But we do know that Zero Senior is one of us. And there is an excellent chance that Zero Senior and the killer are one and the same. <laughs> Then why did he kill Alice and Luna now? If Zero Senior wanted any of us dead, he could have done it way before this. While we were, I don't know, unconscious, for instance. What's the point of setting up this whole game just to kill off two of your participants halfway through? Wait, then are you saying there's another person in here somewhere? It's possible. I think it might be a good idea for us to all look for the killer. Well... We gain nothing by standing around here. Yeah, I've got to find Quark, and soon. If we're going to search, we should go in pairs this time. How are we going to pair up, then? I'm not going with Kay. If he decides he feels like snapping me in half, there's not a whole hell of a lot I can do about it. I'll go with anyone besides Dio. I don't want to go with Dio, either. Fine. He's hardly my first choice, but I'll take Dio. You just got a convoluted bad ending idea? the hell? Just figured that this way we don't have to make this into a huge argument. Besides, I'm gonna be stuck with you once we go through the chromatic doors anyway. No reason to put it off. I will go with Sigma. Oh, yeah? Would you prefer someone else? No, I guess you're okay. That leaves me and Clover as a pair then. Yep. Looks like we're all set. We'll take the cyan door on floor A and the blue door on floor B. All right, Clover and I will take the magenta door and the red door. That leaves us with the yellow and green doors, then. Once we're all done, let's meet in the 4B warehouse, all right? Got it. See you later, then. Yeah, bye! And it loses points and goes off, and you get injected on accident! <laughs> You fool! You were holding the bracelet wrong in your hand! <laughs> Fuck, I never considered that possibility. I mean, if you're holding it in your hand instead of having it on your wrist, then you'd probably only get the first part because you'd, like, drop it. But you'd still pass out. <laughs> I 
there's no one in the infirmary. No quark and no killer. At least as far as I can see. Well, there is someone here. Technically, at least. The old woman. Oh, yeah. She was lying silently on the bed furthest away from us. If it weren't for the bloodstains on her chest and arm, her peaceful expression would have fooled most people into thinking she was just asleep. The blood had dried and darkened and now looked like any other stain. That was when I noticed it. Huh? Wait a minute. Look at her wrist. It seems remarkably clean. Yeah, for some reason there's no blood on this part. Maybe she had something on her wrist. A watch, perhaps. A watch? Yes. It was likely removed after she was killed. That would account for the lack of blood splatter on her wrist. A watch, huh? I don't know. It's like it's kind of wide for a watch. Aren't women's watches usually... thinner? You raise a good point. Perhaps it was some kind of jewelry? Jewelry? You mean like a bracelet or something? Of course! Why didn't I see it sooner? This is the same size and shape as our bracelets. Look, look, it's exactly the same width. Then that would mean... She was wearing a bracelet when she was killed. She was a participant, just like us. Are you sure? This old woman, a player in the nonary game. Okay. Is something wrong? Oh, no. Nothing. If you're correct, then where did the thief hide the stolen bracelet? We were quite thorough during our earlier search, but I know that I saw nothing. And none of the others reported finding a bracelet either. Then that means they've been holding on to it this whole time. They've probably still got it. That would seem likely. No, wait. If they'd been carrying it around, the sensors in the chromatic doors would have picked it up. Without the right combination of bracelets, the secondary door would never have opened. So our suspect is not only a killer and a thief, but a skilled imposter as well. What are you saying? After killing the old woman, they put on her bracelet. In fact, it is entirely possible they are wearing it still. Yes, that would make sense. So the killer is running around with the old woman's bracelet? Yes. And you're telling me they're probably wearing it? Correct. Do you remember what Zero Jr. told us? Something about how the bracelet will come off if the wearer's heart stops. I don't recall the exact words, but in any event, once the old woman had died, her bracelet would have detached, allowing the killer to easily collect it. Why? So that they could participate in the nonary game, I imagine. What? I suspect the killer was someone who was not originally intended to be a participant. For whatever reason, however, they were willing to go to great lengths to ensure that they were. To that end, they killed the old woman, who was one of the original participants, and took her place. But why would someone do that? That? I have no idea. Certainly they must have a goal of some sort. You would have to be mad to choose to come here. But as to what that goal is, and how the killer intends to achieve it, I'm afraid I do not have even speculation. Hmm. That's... interesting. Have you noticed something? Well, there's blood all over the old lady's arm, except for right here. Since that's where the bracelet was, then the bracelet the killer stole should have blood on it. Right. But none of us is wearing a bloody bracelet. Sigma. Please tell me you're kidding. The killer would have, of course, wiped the blood off. Only a fool would walk around with a bracelet covered in blood. So you're saying they cleaned it? Yes. Hmm. Have you discovered something? Hey! I know how we can identify the killer! Oh? We just need some of that luminol. It doesn't matter how well they cleaned it. There should be some traces of blood left. Aha, uh -huh, I see. That could very well work. We should have everyone gather in the rec room, then. That is where the luminol was, I believe. 
Yeah. First, we need to finish looking for Quark, though. We've still got the infirmary and everything beyond the green door. Once we're done with that, we can head back to floor B to meet up with everyone else. Understood. Shall we go, then? Yes. We have a plan. We're going to out the killer. I think you all know who it probably is. Considering the previous timeline we were on. <laughs> There's three doors here, too. The same as what we found on the other side of the blue door. But... Looks like two of them are already unlocked. So it does. The center and rightmost doors both say open. Perhaps the layout here is different. Hmm. Whatever. Let's take the door on the right first. I'm not sure who the killer is. What the? It's the Golem Bay! Funky! Weird how this room was unlocked. Huh, what's this room? That looks like a workbench of some sort. Maybe, but what sort of work? Well, we're here to find Quark, not look at a workbench. You go check out the far end, all right? Very well. Nothing. He's not here either. Hey, Kay, how's it going over there? The safe is open. Kay! Can you hear me? Kay was bent over with his back to me, peering underneath the thing that looked like a workbench. What the hell? I walked toward him as I spoke. Hey, man, what's going on here? Oh, nothing. I bent down and saw he was staring at something that appeared to be a safe. It's empty. Yes. Was there something in there before? No, it was empty when I found it. Was it? Yes. Then what are you doing staring into an empty safe? I was... thinking. Specifically, I was thinking about who opened this safe. Wouldn't that have been the team that went through the green door? I think that was Dio, Fi, and Clover. No. That's unlikely. When we met up with Dio, he told us that he had been in the treatment center. The nameplate on the store says this is the Golem Bay, however. So, you're saying they didn't go here? I believe that is the case. Which, as you can see, is why I was puzzled. If Dio, Fi, and Clover did not open the safe, who did? Well, there's no point thinking about it. We should get back. Yes, and there was another unlocked door, wasn't there? Yep. Let's get moving, then. So, this is the treatment center, huh? This is the room that Dio visited. Don't you think that's kind of strange? Until now, all the chromatic doors have led to a single room each. So why are there two rooms on the other side of the green door? An excellent question. We can talk to the others later, I guess, and see if they know anything. Kay and I split up and began to look for places where Quark might have hidden, or small holes he might have escaped through. Huh? What are these? They must be the treatment pods Dio mentioned. The windows are covered with frost on the inside. I can't see in. Shall we open it? Yes, might as well. Have at it. Wh what? Quark! 
No. Oh no. His his bracelet. It's Oh god. Hold on, Sigma. Calm down. Look at his chest. Can you see it moving? What? I quickly pressed a finger to Quark's wrist. It was faint, but his heartbeat was there. He's He's alive. He's alive. <sighs> what a relief. I'm so glad to know he's safe. I laughed out loud and grabbed Kay in a bear hug, or at least as much of one as I could manage. He patted me on the back and shared what I thought might have been a relieved chuckle. But if he's still alive, why is his bracelet off? Zero Jr. said it would only come off when you died. Perhaps Zero Sr. took it off? What? I have why? no idea. Then maybe Zero Sr. brought Quark here and put him in this pod thing, too. Well, even if he did, we don't have any way to know why. This pod is for medical treatment. Perhaps Quark has contracted some sort of illness. He's sick? What has he got? Well, how would I know that? In any event, we should return and let the rest of our companions know that we found Quark. I imagine Tenmyoji in particular will be pleased. Yeah, I bet. Do you think you can carry him, or...? No. I believe it would be best to leave Quark here. As I mentioned, there is a chance he has fallen ill. If so, then removing him from the pod would be dangerous. The treatment he is currently undergoing could be compromised. Oh. I'll close the pod's cover then. Is that alright? Yeah. Sure. Wait, um, I just thought of something. Are you sure he's gonna be alright? What do you mean? Well, what happens if he wakes up? Can he open that thing on his own? He'll be fine. I noticed a lever inside that can be used to open the cover. So long as no one locks the pod, he should be able to leave whenever he wants. But if someone locks him in, he's screwed? Yes, that is what I said. But you needn't worry. You see? I have not engaged the lock. Now, we should return to the Floor B warehouse. I imagine the others are already there. Right, yeah. Okay, let's go. late. You're one to talk. How much earlier did you get back again? <laughs> I'd be surprised if you searched at all. This is it? Yeah. Clover and Tenmyoji still aren't back. So, find anything? Yeah, we sure did. Yeah? Well, go on, spill it. I explained to them how we'd found Quark in the treatment center. I see. Well, that's good to hear jerk making us all worried there is more and that is there is still some cause for concern just spit it out quark may have contracted an illness of some sort as such he has been left in the treatment pod will he be all right yeah he'll probably probably do you even whatever at least we found him pretty lucky he's alive too what do you mean by that i mean what i said genius i'm glad he's not dead aren't you as equivocal as ever, I see. How kind of you to say so. So, was Quark all you found? The way you were talking made it sound like there was something else. Yeah, I'll explain that after Tenmyoji and Clover get back. There's something I wanted to ask you about first, though. When you went through the green door, did you search two different rooms? Two? No, just the treatment center. I see. Then what was the other one? What do you mean, the other one? You know where there's that intersection with three doors? Well, when Kay and I went there, two of the doors were unlocked. You, you guys unlocked the one that went to the treatment center when you went through the green door. But the other one... Who could have opened it? Don't look at me. I told you, we only opened the one that went to the treatment center. 
Could it have been Zero Senior? I don't know. Hmm. So did you and Kay go through the other door? Yeah. What was in there? Nothing, really. It appeared to be some sort of room for servicing something. That doesn't make any sense. So what the hell was whoever opened that door looking for? Who knows? Tim Miyoji and Clover are running rather late. Should we go and look for them? No, there's something I want to check first. Hello, Earthbound fan. It's never easy with you, is it? Ish. Well, let's get it over with. Oh, we're going to the rec room. I see, we're doing the thing. Huh. This is the rec room. Yeah. Dio and I came here earlier when we were looking for Quark. Pretty cool, isn't it? So why are we here? Oh, I've moved up, uh, so that way I'm not blocking anything. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> Was there something here you needed to see? I said nothing and instead made, made my way over toward the cabinet. Inside was the luminol. I reached in and pulled it out, then headed to the light switch and flipped it. The room went dark and I headed back to where the others were still standing. Whoa, whoa, what is this? You gonna start telling ghost stories or something? Yes. Why? You scared of ghosts? <laughs> You're kidding me, right? Then show me how brave you are. Stick out your bracelet. You too, Fi. Please. Our bracelets? Yeah. And I want to see the underside of them. What do you mean by that? I mean the side on the bottom. The side that doesn't have the display on it. Come on, you really gonna make me explain this? I know what you mean. What I'm asking is what the hell you think you're- Just do it. It's not hard. Should I also participate? What is going on in the game? Lots of things. We're about to do a thing and gather information. That's not helpful. But, uh, a lady is dead, and this may help us figure out who killed her. <laughs> no, you're fine, Kay. Your bracelet is a little different from ours. But I'll join in just to make it fair. There was a brief moment of hesitation before Dio and Fi stuck out their arms. I held mine out as well, wrist pointed upward. This okay? Yeah. Just hold it like that for a moment. As fast as I could, I pulled the luminol from my pocket and sprayed it across all three of our wrists. Ugh, cold. What the hell, man? Dio jerked his arm back with a shout. Don't see anything glowing. Fi's bracelet is clean. So is mine, of course. That leaves only Dio. Wait, what are you talking about? I'll explain in a minute. Just show me your bracelet. Is something wrong? Just show it to me. Come on, Dio. You don't have time for this. Why do I have to do what you tell me to? Because I'm trying to prove your innocence. Well, like hell you are. I don't know what you're looking for. But you're not gonna find it on me. Then just show me your arm. No. You don't get to order me around, I have rights! As he spoke, Dio made a break for the exit. He didn't get far. I'm afraid I can't let you do that, Dio. <laughs> the way he said that. <laughs> he spun around toward the other exit. Stop him! Right! Don't know what you're talking about, but okay. All three of us leapt at Dio. I knew it. His bracelet's glowing. Then that means... Let me go! Get off of me, you fuckers! Dio. You killed the old lady. No! You don't understand. This is all some kind of... A mistake. Shit. What's going on here? I think it's about time you gave us the full story. It was Dio the whole time. How could we have seen this coming? <laughs> as quickly as I could, I explained to Fi what Kay and I had noticed on the old woman's wrist. <laughs> so the person with the bloody bracelet would have to be the person who killed her. 
Yeah, exactly. Even if they'd wiped it off, I figured the luminol would still react to the blood. Looks like I was right. To be fair, it is only circumstantial evidence. <laughs> We've got you, Dio. You might as well confess. Could have gotten blood on himself another way. Well. <laughs> it's... you're right, but... <laughs> Alright, fine. You caught me. I did it. I killed the old bitch and took her bracelet. Are you Zero? Why? No. I was under orders. I was sent here to... To do... Something. To do what? Who gave you this order? I'll die before I tell you. So your orders are more important than Alice and Luna's lives? Whoa, whoa, let's not get ahead of ourselves. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, in terms of the likelihood, like, oh yeah, it's not set in stone, but... I don't think that the argument of but plot really applies. Mostly due in part to the fact that if he did get blood on his bracelet by other means, at this point, someone would have had to have witnessed him doing that. I killed the old lady, but that's it. I don't know anything about what happened to Alice and Luna. That wasn't you? Tread carefully, Sigma. This man is not to be trusted. He has already shown he is willing to lie and kill. Come on, I'm telling the truth. You gotta believe me. Also, this is Dio we're talking about. He has established himself as not being a very nice person. <laughs> Even if we do believe you, you're still a killer. You just haven't killed as many people. Exactly. He should be restrained somehow. If we leave him be, he may well kill again. But where would we put him? Is there a room we can lock or anything? Ah, perhaps we could put him in one of the treatment pods. Once we've locked it, he should be unable to escape. Oh, yeah. Hey, wait! I'll be good, I, I promise! Yeah, I think you're onto something, Kay. Let's go with that! Come on, please! Hey, listen to me! We'll let you out when the white doors open. Someone's gonna need your bracelet to open the secondary door. Don't fuck with me, you guys. There's no way in hell I'm going in that thing. Let go! Let me go! God damn it! I told you assholes to let me go! You can't do this! Stop! Stop! Please stop! Please! No, you can't! In the pod you go. <laughs> Solitary confinement pod. Open this fucking thing. <laughs> no. I said open it, goddammit. I don't think so. Ugh. They're gonna pay for this. When I get out of here, I'm gonna fucking end you. <laughs> He's so mad. So, I guess we figured out who the murderer was. And we found Quark. <laughs> now all that's left to do is find Clover and Tenmyoji. <laughs> yeah, we'll never let you out. Yeah. Why don't we head back to the warehouse and I mean, we have out. to let him out eventually. If we're... If if Kay and uh, Fire are to go through the white doors when they open, they do need Dio. It's just, you know, it's easier to lock him in here and free him for later when he's got no choice but to go through the door. They may have already returned. Good point. Let's go. Technically, she can't let him out because the game doesn't give an option. Like, I feel like you have the option for Sigma to just go, you know what, guys? I know he killed the old lady, but I just feel bad. <laughs> Wouldn't we just need his arm? Oh, uh, yeah, we'll clover it. <laughs> Would 
Wouldn't be the first character to have his hand cut off. <laughs> huh. Looks like they aren't back yet. Perhaps they went to look for us. Oh man. Now we've gotta go look for them. How much time until the white doors open? 50 minutes. Then I don't think we really need to hurry yet. Why don't we wait a little longer? For all we know, they're on their way back right now. Okay, and I nodded. By the way, there was something I wanted to ask you guys about. Yeah, what's up? Yeah. Quark's bracelet. When we found him in the pod, he wasn't wearing it. Why? How should I know? Presumably, it had been taken off before we found him. So we have no idea where it is. Pretty much. I see. That's not good. Without that bracelet, we won't be able to continue the game. What? We need three bracelets to open the secondary door. If we lose one... Oh, no! We wouldn't be able to go through the secondary door. Yeah. Who would be pairing up with Quark? Quark's bracelet should be a red solo. That would mean he'd be with the Cyan pair. Who's the Cyan pair? Clover and Tenmyoji. The two people who are missing. Quark's bracelet is gone, and his two teammates have disappeared. Uh, what's going on? Does that mean Clover and Tenmyoji took the bracelet? Well, if they found Quark before you did, yeah, there's a good chance they did. Then why aren't they back yet? Perhaps they've already gone through the white door. What? No, that's not possible. The primary doors haven't even opened yet. Perhaps someone opened one of them. How? I don't know, but it's happened before. Remember the three doors on the other side of the green door? Someone made one of them open. Perhaps this is the same thing. But... But that's against the rules. Yes, I know. But if the person opening the doors is Zero Senior, do you really think the rules matter? Zero Senior controls the entire game. So are you saying Clover or Tenmyoji is Zero Senior? It is a possibility. It would explain why they still haven't shown up. Could they really have taken Quark's bracelet and gone through one of the white doors? If they did, we won't know where they went until the doors open for the rest of us. So I would assume. This is all just speculation, though. Maybe we should go look for them again. One of us can stay behind so that we don't miss them if they come back. Okay, I'll stay. Sigma and I will go see if we can find them then. Make sure you get back five minutes before the door opens, all right? Okay. Oh, and don't forget to bring Dio with you. Might get stopped here. Of course. Pantry. This is the pantry? So it would appear. Well, looks like they're not here. When we started looking for Quark, they were sent off to search everything beyond the red door, which would have meant this room. Not gonna do us any good to hang around here, though. Let's head upstairs. Very well.
No one here either, huh? Tenmyoji loves scotch so much, I thought we might find him here drinking some. It was around that time that I noticed Kay was acting strangely. He was staring at the shelf of alcohol in a way that would probably... I probably would have described as blankly if I could have actually seen his eyes. Hey, what's up? You want a drink? Oh, no. Well, I would enjoy a drink, but this mask... Right. Sorry, that sucks. Honestly, I'd gotten so used to the suit I'd kind of forgotten you were wearing it. Why the heck did they make you wear that thing anyway? You still don't remember anything? Well, actually, I... I did remember a little. Really? Yes. What did you remember? My father. When... When did you remember that? Did it just pop up out of nowhere? Please, don't joke. Sorry. This is serious. He's got a bag of Doritos in there. He's fine. <laughs> Sorry. So, you remembered who your father was? Yes. What about your mom? I... don't seem to have one. I... Oh! So your dad raised you. Well... He stopped for a moment, then calmly folded his hands in front of him. I was raised in the facility where my father worked. He was the only person who worked there, which meant he was the only person I saw until I was older. That had been the situation for as long as I could remember, though, so I never thought it odd. He wouldn't allow me to go near him while he was working, but the only times he wasn't working were the times when he was sleeping. As such, the only communication I had was with the education software he'd given me. I suppose I was a fairly expressionless child then. We develop body language to communicate with others, and with no one else to communicate with, I suppose it makes sense. Once I learned to read and write, I began to realize that my situation was not normal. Many of my books mentioned a mother as part of a family, and in several, the mother, father, and children would eat meals together and talk to one another. Soon I found myself longing for a mother of my own. Someone who would always be with me, who would scold me if I did something wrong. At night, they would read to me before bedtime. If only I had a mother like that, I thought. I would be so happy. I mean, he did have a rabbit... stuffed animal, I guess? So, for the first time in my life, I asked my father for something. He had finished working, and as usual, was making his way toward his bedroom when I stopped him and asked for a mother. He looked at me silently for a long moment before finally responding. Okay. I remember to this day how happy I was at that moment. A few months later, he called me into his laboratory. It was the first time he'd ever done anything like that. My heart was beating quickly as I stepped inside. Standing next to him was a young woman, and my hope soared. But when he said her name, or rather her ID number, they were dashed. He had given me a robot to play the part of a mother. I didn't want a mother that was just a machine who did what a human told her to. When I told my father that, he looked surprised for the first time in my life. Then he frowned, coughed, and admonished me for being a whiner. He'd never scolded me for anything before. At first I was surprised, then angry. Hot tears streamed down my face. My father ordered the robot to take care of me and shoot us out of his lab. The robot was very convincing and she smiled and spoke as if she was a real person, but I refused to answer her and locked myself in my room. You can talk to a robot, and it will respond. But in the end, you are still talking to a machine, not a person. Kinda? If that was what I'd wanted, I'd still have- I still had the education software my father had given me. When I ignored the robot as it tried to take care of me, it looked sad. It couldn't really be sad, of course. It was only programmed to look that way. A robot's facade of sadness didn't mean anything to me. 
After that, I stopped expecting anything from my father. We'd never really spoken to begin with, so it was easy enough for me to make sure we never saw one another. I lived my life as if he didn't even exist. Perhaps it seems strange to you that I continued to live with him, but I never considered leaving. Perhaps in the hidden depths of my heart, I longed for a relationship with my father. Everything changed when I was 18. I left my room one morning to find a woman standing outside of it. She was the first human I'd ever seen apart from my father, and I was understandably surprised. For a moment, I thought my father had created a new robot, but when I told her that, she laughed and explained that she had come to help him. As it turned out, she was a very mysterious person. She was much older than I was, but something about the way she behaved was almost girlish. She would tell me stories about the world outside in such a way that I was never sure if she was telling the truth or making up fantastic lies. Ultimately, though, the truth didn't matter. I loved her stories. She wasn't helping my father directly with his research, so I spent most of my days with her. Before long, I discovered she'd known my father when he was young. She told me stories of how he'd fallen in love as a younger man. I began to imagine that the person he'd fallen in love with had been her and that she was, in fact, secretly my mother. After she settled in with us, our long-established routine began to change drastically. First, we started to eat together. Before then, I had never shared a meal with anyone in 18 years. She scolded me for my table manners, or more accurately, the lack thereof. If I was going to eat with others, she said, I would need to be more polite. Having eaten alone for my entire life, manners had never been something I'd even thought about. My father got in trouble, too, when he made the mistake of reading through research papers during dinner. The look of surprise and embarrassment on his face made me burst into laughter. I couldn't remember the last time I'd shared a laugh with my father. It might have been the first time. The room we considered our living room changed, too. Before, it had just been another room, but she made it comfortable. After we finished our dinner, I would sit on the sofa and relax with her and my father. Those times were the ones I cherished the most. For a little while, every day, I got the family I'd longed for ever since I was a child. At her suggestion, I started to help with my father's research. He specialized in genetic engineering, and I discovered I had an interest in it as well. Time faded away as, my long as I lost myself in research. And now that we were working and studying together, my father and I had, great, had a great deal to talk about. For the first time in my life, we began to speak with one another like a father and son. Whenever I impressed him with something I'd learned, I felt a surge of happiness, and it drove me to study even harder. My day is felt full, bright, and meaningful, but most importantly, I was happy. Four years passed in the blink of an eye. Until one day, I happened to overhear my father and the woman speaking in the laboratory. Their tone was serious, so I listened closer, curious to know what they were talking about. That was when I heard her say that she planned to give her life to achieve their goals. It was clear that she wasn't being metaphorical. She would have to die. I was in shock. The research I had thrown myself into would lead to her death. I asked my father to stop his research immediately. He refused to listen. She agreed with him. She told me that she had been prepared for what she had to do since the day she came to our facility. My father had known about it from the beginning as well. Angry and disappointed, I began to investigate what exactly the research I'd been helping with was working toward. Perhaps, I thought, I could figure out a way to keep her alive. I discovered much more than I'd bargained for. To begin with, I learned that the ultimate success of my father's research would require a good deal of sacrifice. And I also learned that my own existence was just another part of his project. I had been created to function as my father's spare. If he died during his research, I was intended to continue it in his place. I was stunned. I was furious with my father, and with her and even with the research I'd poured myself into for four years. There was only one thing to do. Destroy the facility and end my father's horrible research once and for all. 
I made plans to destroy the main reactor, and with it the entire facility. But she saw right through me. My father was livid, and locked me in my room until his research was complete. All I could think of was how I might stop him. She did her best to convince me that I'd misunderstood, that everything would be fine. As much as I wanted to believe her, I remembered in the back of my mind that she had been the one who pushed me to become involved in my father's research. Had that been an earnest desire to give me something to do with my life, or... Still, I couldn't bring myself to hate her. She had given me a reason to live. Even if she had conspired with my father to mold me into his replacement, the warmth she'd shown me had been real. She'd made me feel as if I had a real family, and that was something I wouldn't have given up for the world. I pleaded with her to leave, but she quietly took shook her head. There was someone very special to her, she told me. He had saved her life once, and she felt her death would help to repay that favor. She would have liked nothing more than to marry him and live a happy, normal life together. But she couldn't. For his sake, she said. And for the sake of the future she had wanted, she was determined to see my father's research succeed. I realized then that although she was the most important person in my life, there was someone more important than me in hers. She tried to explain that beyond what we could see was a future where no one would have to die, but I refused to listen. What good was a potential future to me? It was what I had now that I wanted. I couldn't stand to think that she would give her life for a man I'd never even seen. So I shut myself off from the world. Perhaps that is why I lost my memory. Hey, let out a deep, tired sigh. I'm sorry. I lost track of time. It's okay. Oh, it's okay! <laughs> Not having any memories is less than desirable, but it could be argued that regaining them is almost more taxing. So you remember almost everything? No, the details are still... indistinct, especially more recent events. Huh. Um, Sigma, I'm sorry, but would it be alright if I laid down for a bit? What's wrong? I don't feel very well. It must be because I remembered so much so quickly. My head feels like it's going to explode. Are you okay? Yes. I think I just need to rest. Okay. As long as you need. I'll go look for Clover and Tenmyoji myself. I'm sorry. Thank you. Okay, lowered himself heavily onto the red sofa in the corner of the room. Well, so I'd better get moving then. I stepped out of the room and nearly ran into Fi. What are you doing? You're supposed to be waiting back in the warehouse. Yeah, I know. I just decided to go check on you guys. I waited a long time and nobody showed up. Judging by your face, you haven't found them either. Tired himself out in the rec room. Damn. Yeah, and then he had a really long story to tell. Yeah. Where's Kay? He's in the lounge. You decided to split up? Well, not quite. Instead of waiting for my answer, she opened the door to the lounge and walked in. What's up with him? I guess he's not feeling too well. He said he wanted to rest for a bit. Is he alright? I think so. We should leave him alone right now, though. Remember, there's a real person inside that suit. I'm sure he's just tired. Tired, huh? How are you feeling? I feel fantastic. What? I feel tired just looking at you. Your face is like a weak old sock. Really? Well, I guess I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little exhausted. 
I mean, all of a sudden, I wake up trapped in some weird-ass game, and then dead bodies start turning up. Honestly, I'm amazed I've managed to hold on to my sanity for this long. Just about everything here makes absolutely zero sense. Suck <laughs> <laughs> the more I try and figure any of it out, the more I feel like my brain's just gonna melt and run out my ears. You know what I'm talking about, right? We managed to figure out who the killer was, but there's still a hundred other questions we have no idea about. Where the hell are we? Why are we even here? What's this whole nonary game thing for? And what is Zero Senior up to? Well, how about who Zero Senior is? The rabbit said he was one of us, but... Do you think it's Dio? Who knows? Besides, we still don't know why Dio killed them. He said he was ordered to do it, but... And there's more, too. What about the old lady? Who is she? What's her deal? Hell, what are any of our deals? I don't know jack shit about anybody here. I don't even know anything about you, Fi. Are you serious? You can't honestly suspect me, can you? No, that's not it. I'm just like you. I was kidnapped on December 25th and brought here too. She trailed off. Hmm? You heard that, right? Yeah. It came from the hallway. Let's go have a look. Let's go. There's nobody here. Maybe they got on the elevator? Let's try hitting the button. If the door doesn't open immediately, then we'll know the elevator's downstairs. Santa! He came back from the first game. <laughs> Dang, that took a while. Thought so. Let's go. <laughs> Any of you chumps know Japanese? Actually, I'm Santa. Which way? Where do you think they went? Let's just head for the green door. Why? Because the treatment center's there. That's where Dio and Quark are. Uh, so? You aren't worried? I just want to make sure they're safe. They're fine. Tenmi Oji or Clover probably made that noise. Well, maybe both of them. Any of you chumps know Christmas Eve? <laughs> but I don't think they'd hurt Quark or Dio. Well, Dio maybe, but... <laughs> Are you sure? Dio huh? admitted to killing the old woman, but he still insists that he didn't kill Alice or Luna. What if he's telling the truth? Are you serious? You're gonna believe him? Doesn't matter. I just want to know if they're safe. No harm in being careful. Alright, fine. We headed to the first pod. I cracked open the top and lifted it back. Hey Quark, how you doing? There was Quark, sound asleep. See? Yeah, I guess you're right. I was probably getting worried for nothing. How about Dio? Let's open his. Is that a good idea? Oh, he's dead. <laughs> what, what the hell? Check his pulse. I was. It was pointless to check his pulse. He was obviously dead, but I did it anyway. Yeah. 
He's dead. Look, the oxygen level for his pod says zero percent. Oh no, how awful. Oh no. <laughs> then that means he asphyxiated. But why? Someone must have tampered with the pod and lowered the oxygen levels. Who? Look. How could Dio murder Dio like, like this? Come on. Let's go. Right. Without waiting for me to follow, Phi turned and ran off. I took a deep breath and followed. Fine, I burst into the lounge and ran up to Kay. Kay! Wake up! It's Dio, he found a way. Something's happened. When he didn't move, I grabbed him by the shoulders and shook. He twitched and quickly sat up. What, what is it? Dio is dead! We explained about how we'd found Dio dead, and how it looked like he'd died of asphyxiation. It appeared that someone had reduced the oxygen level of his pod to zero. What? But why? I thought that Dio was the one who killed the old woman, Alice, and Luna. Then who killed him if he was the murderer? The only people who could have done it are Clover and Tenmyoji. There's also Quark. What? No! That's impossible. Are you suggesting Quark woke up, opened his pod from the inside, killed Dio, and then went back to sleep, like all in a day's work? No, I'm just saying that strictly speaking, it's a possibility. <laughs> so just, you know, take it into consideration. I suppose it'd be possible, but... Well, in that case, Phi, I hate to say it, but doesn't that mean that you could have done it? Me? Yes, you could have done it any time after Sigma and I left the Floor B warehouse. Don't give me that. I was waiting for Clover and Tenmyoji to show up. They never did, though, so I got impatient and went to find you guys. Then I bumped into Sigma in front of the lounge. She went on to explain about the sound we'd heard. I see. So you heard something. Then perhaps it is likely that Clover and Tenmyoji were at fault. Were the two of you together the whole time you were investigating? Yes, we were. You never split up or anything? Nope. Hmm. In any event, we don't have a great deal of time to discuss it. Oh, crap! We've only got seven minutes until the primary door is open. All right. Let's get back to the Floor B warehouse. Maybe Clover and Tenmyoji are already there. Oh, but where is Dio's bracelet? His what? Huh? You didn't take it? Dio was a green solo. Phi and I are the magenta pair. Shit. You're right. Without Dio's bracelet, we won't be able to open the secondary door. I fear not. Then we need to hurry. We'll drop by the treatment center on the way back and grab the bracelet. All three of us don't need to go. You two go on ahead. I'll get the bracelet. All right. Oh, one other thing. I need to give you these. The yellow pair bracelets? Were these Alice and Luna's? Yes. Without these, you would be stuck. So, here you are. Please, take them. I grabbed the bracelets and shoved them into my pocket. All right, let's get going. Shit. They're not here. Maybe they did go through the door, like Kay said. With Quark's bracelet? Or... Or what? Oh, come on, man. You better not give me that maybe they're already dead crap. I got enough of it from Dio. You've gotta be kidding me. This isn't funny, Fi. If you're right, then you, Kay, Quark, and I are the only people still alive in here. Hey, lay off. I want to believe they're alive, too, but... Heard a noise and turned. I apologize for keeping you. Did you get Dio's bracelet? Well, technically, yes, but... Huh? Best you just see it. This is what I found in Dio's pod. What? 
What the hell? I assume whoever murdered Dio did this. But why? There's no point! I can't say for sure, but if I were to guess... Chromatic doors have opened. Five minutes remain until chromatic doors close. With a bracelet like this, I doubt we can get past the secondary door. That means Kay and I... will... Oh no. Shit. You're... you're gonna... When the time comes, those three doors will automatically close. If anyone is left outside after they close, they'll... They'll be penalized. I see. That's what they wanted. Whoever killed Dio wanted to use the game to kill me and Kay. That's why they broke the bracelet. I think so. It makes the most sense. How can you be so calm? In five minutes, you're gonna be... Be... Go on ahead, Sigma. You have those bracelets Kay gave you, right? You should be able to get through the secondary door with those. So just... Fuck that! You know I can't just ditch you guys like that! But if you stay here, you'll... You think I don't know that? But what kind of a monster am I if I just leave you here to die? Ah! God damn it! This was bad. What was I going to do? I needed to calm down. Just calm down. Calm down and think. There had to be a way to save them. There had. Another TBC! Woo! Let's save! Hell yeah! We don't have the information. The weirdest thing about this, this is like the only one that's like this. I don't know if there's just a way to bullshit the answer, but it is really bizarre to me that this is not labeled like this. Uh. But anyway. Let me jump here, and then save. We don't have time to talk about this. Next time. Next time, Fi. It'll be okay. Alright. There we go. I'm out of time! In fact... Wow, you have a long way to go? Yes, I do. Next time on Zero Escape Z. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let me. Whoop. There we go. Then. Chat. Say something, chat. Talk to me. Yes. Whoop. Yeah, I'm ramping up here. Something. Thank you. Good job. Excellent. I appreciate all that you have that. Yes. Weird. Uh. Mystery. Let's play some more Tales of Symphonia music. Sleeps for the week. Well, it's late. <laughs> it's almost 10 p.m. for me. But yes, I'm gonna end it here. Say goodbye to uh, YouTube, everyone. Goodbye, YouTube. Bye bye. Goodbye, YouTube. Goodbye.